course I don't think it's too young for a 12 year old. Oh, do you know, I can't tell these days. And believe me, Tracy's mates are very sensitive about that sort of thing. Go on then, I'll risk it. Oh, 50p, love. Uh, right, love, thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, well, we'll be seeing you later at Alan's Grander Than Grand Opening. Listen, it's more than my life's worth not to turn up. Honestly, I mean, you've gone about Tracy growing up fast. You should see Alan with this shop. He's like a kid with a new toy. He were up before God this morning checking his lists of things to do. Hey, you leave him alone. He's entitled. Now, I was saying to Ken, Alan is one of the few blokes who can just get on with a job without shouting the odds. I mean, he's built that business up from nothing when you think. Well, he can certainly follow a tight schedule. I'll give him that. So, uh, everything's all right between you, is it? Well... I think we're on the right road, yeah. I mean, it's bound to take time, I suppose, but things are looking up. Touch wood. Now then, uh, uh. I want the glasses and the booze on this table right. when I go and get it, right? Yeah. I want the food on that table when it arrives, yeah. and I want the brochures and the price list on the counter there so that people can just take them away. Okay. okay? Is that it? No. Uh, there's... Yes, that is it, I think. Where did I put my car keys? Uh, I don't know. Hello. All right. Mr. Bradley about? Uh, yeah, he's in the back. But uh, look, if you've come uh, chasing that receptionist job, I'm uh, afraid he's giving it someone else. He's done what? He's giving it someone else. Look, I'm dead sorry, but well, between you and me, she's not a patch and she won't last more than a day. So if you fancy giving us your phone number, I can give you the bell soon as she slings her hook. Yeah. Hello, love. You all right? I can't have misheard you. Tell me. Well, first I get your phone call saying congratulations, the job's yours. Then he tells me you've given it to someone else. Hey. Lesson number one. Never take any notice at all of what Martin said. Hey, hang on. You said that you got... Of course you got the job. I told you you got the job, didn't I? Martin, stop jumping to conclusions, Are you will you? winding me up? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Don. He said he'd got some more bat in the one. Give us two minutes' peace. I'm sorry, we're honest. You seem very wind up well, I must admit. Like it, I, know. I think I'm going to like working here. What's the damage? Bet don't use that word, please. Look, Alec, I want to know how serious this is. Well, I don't know how serious it is, do I? If I knew what the Inland Revenue had on me, all this would be a doddle. Look, Alec, you must have to... <laughs> Some idea how much money might be involved. Well, as little as possible. See, the secret is to, to come up with some income that you say you've forgotten about and then convince them that there's no more lurking. How's it going? Rotten. Right now, it looks about as convincing as a spreadsheet for Ned Kelly. Look, Alec, you're making me nervous. Deducting reasonable expenses is one thing. This looks like full-blown fiddling. You're not filling me with confidence, Bet. I've already acquired an accountant who's forgotten how to do his sums. Now I have a wife with more suspicion than any bloke deserves. But are you fiddling? Well, that's relative to what you consider reasonable and what Mr. Tax considers bent. Anyway, look, I'll get nowhere arguing the toss with you, will I? Just give me an hour or two, love. I'm left on my own. I have a chance of ironing things out. I'll get her from underneath my feet. She'll only gloat if she knows I'm in bother. Shout if you want me, love. Could do with an Irish. You can do with stopping sober. Ooh. Hey, that second time this Ooh. morning. I think you should have stopped in bed. I'm sorry, Philip. Brian bought me but half past two this morning. Oh, it's a long time since I was disturbed by a fellow in the early hours. Not like that. Been out with his mates on a stag do that went on a bit late, I think. You think? Well, it makes no odds, does it? Not give him an inquisition every time he comes home late. Don't know how you manage that with all this noise. Ah, oh, sometimes it helps, sometimes it's a pain. If you get on my nerves, I can always go on where it's quiet. What is it? Mm -hmm. uh, chemistry at the moment. Hair levels. Ooh, I don't know why people bother. I mean, the only entered me for two GCSEs and I flunked them both. Yeah, well, I suppose it depends what you want, doesn't it? I mean, I've been offered a place at Leeds University if I can get the grades. What for? To get a degree. What for? Well, there's, there's a better chance of a job, isn't there? The funny thing about all that is, there's a bloke who works down Redrick. He went to Polly and got letters after his name and everything. He's ended up cutting grass. I think I've landed on my feet, don't you? Oh, yes, very nice. Martin, you've excelled yourself. Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, all right, if I'm honest, Don, put most of it to rights. Thank God. Thanks, John. Well, well done. Yeah. Martin, yeah? there's another case out in the car. Go and right. put it in the back to we need it, okay? Okay. Now then, uh, 
I think we'll open some of this red and let it breathe, right? And then we'll uh, we'll put the white somewhere cool because we haven't got a fridge yet. Okay? Don't worry, I'll find somewhere. I'm very grateful, you know, for the job. Yeah, do you know there's something I want to get straight right from the off, like honesty, you know, because you know you'll be uh, handling cash here. Well, my last three jobs involved cash transactions, and I was always spot on. Ask anybody. Good. Welcome aboard. Thanks. Oh, I took a message for you, and Mrs. Burns. She said you still haven't returned a call. So, the finished emporium, eh? Blimey, I thought you'd smell the booze. Well, well, well. <laughs> you recruit? Yes, yes. Started, actually. Yes, Thanks. that's Dawn Prescott, yeah. and she's busy, aren't you, love? Yeah. She's busy. Yeah. You haven't run yourself into an overdraft over this lot, have you? What are you talking about? It's a perfectly respectable wine, that. Sailor return, I hope. Punters don't come with these sort of dudes. They're frightened you're going to stitch him up. Well, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? Anyway, that's not the point, is it? The point of this launch is that I make a big splash with the advertising and let people know that we're here. Right. That's my man. Is he a partner or something? Who, him? No, he owns a curtain factory down on Coronation Street. Bit early for the opening, isn't he? When are we near ready yet? Won't bother ball with. He'd turn up to the opening of an envelope, that fella. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've worked hard, Mike, you know what I mean? And I feel I deserve a bit of success. Oh, you're breaking my heart. You want to make a fortune? You take the risk, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Are we winning? Yes. Yes, but I, I think we are. Well, it's uh, it's more a case of breaking even, really. <laughs> That's a phrase they'll understand at the Inland Revenue. That and daylight robbery. Do you know, if the Queen knew what tax inspectors do in her name, she'd abdicate. She would. She'd abdicate. What turned up, Alec? Well, I've, I've shuffled a few debits and credits to make it look like a genuine error on my part. But now, you see these. It's all double dutch to me, Lord. Well, I booked these acts, you see, between last September and December. It's a tidy block, you see. Yeah, but I still don't see... Look! Now, Mr. Tax is suggesting that I am withholding information. Which you are. Which I am. Which I'm not! No. No, I, now I think he's bluffing. Is he? Well, of course he is. They make a virtue of it. Go on, love. Well, the thing is, if I go and, and come up with a tidy sum of undeclared income, it looks like I've got more to hide. And haven't you? That's not the point, Bet. No. Now listen. And I shall go to him and I shall say I've come up with a bundle of paperwork that I thought had gone through the accounts. Do you reckon they'll go for that? Well, that's not handed to him on a plate. Will I Ellis like? No. No, I shall go in there and I shall say, uh, Look, Mr. Davy, I've been through these books and I've turned them inside out, upside down, and I've come up with nothing. Except these, of course, but you already know about these. And he'll say, uh, well, as a matter of fact, I don't know about these, Mr. Gilroy. Oh, oh, oh I'll say. Then perhaps these are what you're looking for. See? Tactics, it's all a question of attitude. Oh, man. you're a crafty snake, Gilroy, aren't you? I think I'll ring him and see if he'll see me this afternoon. Uh, well, you know, while I've still got it up here. Oh, yeah. Do you know, I haven't had time to blink this morning. We're running out of our pot and we've got a queue at the back. Oh. Well, you've made a rub for your own back, haven't you? Me hey, what? Well, if you haven't screamed sexual harassment every time Charlie Bracewell looked at your oven gloves, we wouldn't be understaffed, would we? You know, I'm getting sick of being blamed for Charlie doing a bunk. Oh, ignore him, Betty. He's up to way with aggro. What sort of aggro? <laughs> no, we can't put right. Oh. You do the hot pots, yeah. I'll clear the queue. Yeah. Right in first, and let's have it a bit more civilised. I'll have a pint, please, Bet, and some hot pot if Betty's got time. Ask her nicely, love. She might bite your head off. You see, Mavis, there are houses and there are homes. Well, yes, Now, Derek. no amount of mortgage is going to buy you a home. Only time will see to that. Time and a certain subtle sense of selection. I mean, take the willows. Beautifully built, reasonable price bracket, commendable location, but it wasn't a home. That doesn't mean to say it can't become one. I mean, you make a place a home, don't you? Yes, but only if it's got the potential. And there's not a lot you can do with polystyrene coving. And that pseudo-Spanish archway into the kitchen fills me with dread. I quite like that. I must say, I think Derek's caution may be warranted. Thank you, Emily. Oh, your newlyweds, Mavis, and the ambience of a property surely contributes to the balance of your relationship. It's probably the biggest move you'll ever make. Just my point. 
Give it time, baby. There you are, kid. Oh, thanks, buddy. I've been dying for this. I think he's have look, he's got time for a break. Really? Yeah. Right. Come on, Hang on, Alex. What did he say? Yeah. Sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned, Mr. Yeah. Gilroy. Well, I couldn't agree with him more. Are you sure you've got things worked out right? Oh, I bet. Look, I could read him this spreadsheet backwards if he wanted. All question of attitude. Right, I'm off. Uh, good luck, Alec. Thanks, look. Good luck. Hi, you Hi. Hi. Fine, is it? Well, I'm covered, thanks, Mike. Uh, orange and soda, battle of police. Within a minute, Dan. How are things then? All right. Uh, you and Mum? Oh, fine, fine, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, to tell you the truth, I'm getting to wish that Ivy was a bit more like your girl. Oh? Well, that must be a very understanding woman, letting a young hubby off the leash. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? I saw you going into that disco early hours this morning on your own. I see. And, uh, you reckon that's any business of yours, do you? No, look, I'm just asking. Like my mum was asking Gail the other day about how much time we spent together. And I'm going to tell you now and you can pass it on, all right? However me and Gail run our lives, there's nobody else's business. Have you got that? Why don't I get interviewees like you, eh? Depends what you're advertising for. Let's see, uh, Girl Friday, good looking with initiative, uh, 25 ish, must have a sense of fun. Sorry, not me. Sounds like a setup for a video king. No, it is, it is very small. Anyway, I'm just interested in knowing whether you came because of the advert in the Weatherfield Recorder. Yes, I did. What is well, your old man up to, eh? Guys, market research. I think he calls it a field survey. Hey, come over here in a minute and tell you that you can't afford not to advertise in his rag. Do you know, I thought this was supposed to be my day, and I find I'm surrounded by opportunities. Oh, speaking of which, the bloke over there in the dark blue suit is from the council, planning an estate. Huh? You could do worse and have a word with him, uh, but don't say I said. Oh, thanks, Deirdre, yes, sir. I think he's only here for the beer. Oh. Right, well, anyway, it's very nice meeting you. Nice to hear that. Bye. Hello. Ken, I've been keeping my ears open, and I think a lot of people are here today as a result of my advert in the, uh, in the recorder. Well, I was just going to say... Do you know, I think we've got a future together. <laughs> Catch up with you later. All right. <laughs> what the hell <laughs> <don't they? laughs> Oh, hello, madam. Have a drink. Oh, thanks. Oh. I meant to be here on the dock, but Mavis is in one of her depressions. Ah, you should have, but also... Oh, give us a break. Oh, hello, you two. Oh, oh Rita, hello. come and talk to me. I get the feeling I'll get signed up for a burglar alarm if I stand still long enough. Doesn't it look great? Mark. Where the field security systems? Sorry. No, I'm sorry. He's really tied up at the moment. Can I take a message? <clears throat> How much? It's two eggs on toast and a cup of tea. Uh, is it one pound and eight? You tell me. Yes, it is. <laughs> You've overcharged him. Oh. You better give him his 12p back. <laughs> She'll be all right when she gets the hang of it. Yeah, of course she will. Hey, you haven't forgotten I want to slope off this afternoon, have you? No. Oh, it's quiet now. You can go on now. Uh, it's just that uh, Brian's working late, so I've got to pick the kids up before I make a start on the goodies. I put a tree in the fridge this morning. Looks decidedly stubborn. Oh. We could be having strawberry soup for Sarah's birthday. <laughs> well, Brian, not be there then. Yes, he'll be there, but later. Oh my God, we didn't yeah. yeah. Now, if you think of offering me one of them drinks, I'd have to refuse. Why's that? Well, you see, I'm on duty in five minutes. I take my job very seriously. Dawn, this is Mr. Sugden. He's our local SPG. <laughs> Neighbourhood Watch is no laughing matter. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I'm just Excuse saying, me. Mr. Bradley. What's Neighbourhood that? Watch is no laughing matter. No, please. Well, it's a better turnout than I expected. Alan must be pleased. Oh, I think he's pleased. I'm, uh, I'm just going on duty now, but I'd like to pick your brains about the sewers in Inkerman Street. Oh. Uh, I'll leave you to handle that one, darling. Drink up, we're off. Oh, dear me. Come on, then. We might as well. Yeah. Oh, sorry, love. Seem to be in the way here. Thank you. Hello, Alan. I saw the advert in the recorder. I think my personal invitation must have got stuck in the hole somewhere. Listen, I told you I'd ring you when I could. Rita, are you? 
Have you been drinking? Don't worry. I just want to pinpoint her so I don't say the wrong thing. I don't want you here, Cal. Look, I can blend into the wallpaper, or I can start making it awkward. Now, which one is she? There's a tea dance down at the centre if you're just passing time, Winnie. Give us a shout if you want topping up, love. Just a penny a bit, with a whiskey, whiskey in it. <laughs> I just thought I'd come and give your Alec a bit of therapy. Forget it, Cock. He's down at the Inland Revenue. Uh, on his own? That's right. And you know some at Bernie? I think he prefers it like that. Is that what he said? Oh, he said a lot more than that. But the bottom line is, he used to have an accountant called Bernie Greenwood. Used to? Whose heart was in the right place, but didn't pass the Gilroy panic test. Bottled out when the going got tough. It's not right giving me all this grief, you know, he got himself into this mess. More to the point, Bernie. He got himself out of it. Do you know how many Alec Gilroy's I have to cope with? Ten. More. And they're all your blood brothers, till the books start falling off the table with the weight of impartial entries, then I'm the biggest git to walk this hill. That comes somewhere close to what Alec called you. Oh, come on, lass. Fair do. Fair do's nothing. I watch my Alec sweat over them figures. Oh, we managed to get them sorted in the end. And he'll probably finish up with a Queen's pardon. But that's no thanks to you, is it? Hey, a bent accountant's no good to nobody. I can't get involved in dirty money. Since when? I suppose I'm paying for this one. Right, I'm off, Ellen. See you, mate. Yeah, I see you. Come on in, please. <clears throat> so, what's your story? What story? You've just ditched me, haven't you? Keep your voice down. Why should I? You've just ditched me and you can't even be bothered to make up a sob story. Well, that says it all about you. Who is that? It's just a, an old customer of ours. Cheers. Well, I'll tell you what you are, Bradley. You're a taker. You took everything I had on offer and then you took me for a mug. Yes, love. It's me. And to look at you, I'd credit you with a bit more sense than to have him. All back. right, that's enough. Now get out. Sod off, you. I'm right, though, aren't I? He's taken from me. He's taken from both of us. He only came back to you for your money, so he could set himself up in this place. Is that so? Of course it is, and you know it. He's had us both for mugs, this fella. Sorry, love. Not me. What Alan's got here has nothing to do with me or my money. Nice meeting you. Rita, just... OK, folks, the party's over, Martin. Will you see these people out, please? Well, I hope you're satisfied. What do you think? Why didn't you just ring me? I wanted to know where I stood, Alan. Why didn't you just ring me? I'll ring you a taxi because you're over the limit. You bastard! Let's go on, we'll clear up tomorrow. Where's everybody gone? Well, hey, you didn't get much for your money, did you? Tell him. Hey, what are you doing back, love? Sandra's working tonight. No, she's not, not till later. No, she found to ask what I cover for a couple of hours. She wants to live round to their Jason school to his teacher. She picks her days, doesn't she? <laughs> I just fancy putting my feet up with a good book. <laughs> See Milado's here again? He's waiting for Alec. Oh, is he still gallivanting? We're laid, I suppose. Anyway, Emily didn't know what to do with order, so we were left there sitting like lemons. Mm. You all right, love? You've been very quiet tonight. <laughs> yeah, well, look. I better tell you, if I'm to stop you putting your foot in it like I did. What are you going on about? Last night, uh, early this morning, I was picking up a fare from Radcliffe Street and I spotted your Brian slipping into one of them discos. Ah, uh, Brian? Who with? On his own. Anyway, I, I brought it up with him at dinner time and it absolutely blew his lid. He had a right go at me about minding my own business. I don't like sound of that. Well, neither do I. I don't like going round to your Sarah, young Sarah's, for a birthday party and having another round. So, I'll drop you, but I'm not coming in. You know, I've had a funny feeling about them to ever since girl jumped down my throat. 
There's something going on there, Don, and I don't like it at all. Derek's developing quite an appetite for traipsing round and knocking on people's doors. I mean, he's quite happy to go looking at property, but he don't want to commit himself. Maybe I don't want to know I'm up to here with you and your damned house hunting. And if Derek's getting on your nerves, why don't you go see him about it? Oh, fine. Sorry about all that. Wasn't your fault, was it? It's all over between me and Carol a long time ago. Hope you believe that. Not until today I didn't. Not if I'm honest. It was always at the back of my mind. When you came back late, when I didn't know where you'd gone. Then today when she turned up to say her piece, I realised she'd only said that if you'd let her down. Now she knows how I felt. Well, if she thought there was anything to reclaim, I didn't encourage her. You've got to believe that and all. I believe you. I was proud of you today. The shop. Getting the money you needed without a leg up from me. Because that buried another ghost. You thought I was going to sting you for a long, didn't you? I did doubt your motives for coming back. Rita, I came back because I love you. I know that. Now. My little love. I was just giving you up for lost. You, out. Alec, what's happened? You've earned a lot of brass out of me. And where were you at the execution, eh? Alec, if you told me you were going... Alec! What did he say? Two words. Newton and Ridley. The brewery have disclosed my earnings as their leisure coordinator, going back to God knows when. I thought you said Newton and Ridley kept that one sweet. You told me they wrote it off as unspecified entertainment expenses. That, that was the agreement. They covered me back to make it worth my while. It was always the bloody agreement. How much is it going to cost? Everything we've got and more. Oh, my God. And that's only if I'm lucky. The worst they can do is take me to court and plumb for a sentence. They have yet to make that decision. But they wouldn't go that far, would they? They wouldn't send him to jail for that. Ah, oh. right, Echo, I'll swap your jobs. They can stick these early morning runs to the station. Ah, well, tea's on Ob and I've left you some of Sundup Grill. I do. Right, Mark, you need well, this thing is at Costa Brava. Good idea. What time do you want to pick it up? Well, I'll go today myself, only Audrey's babysitting. Uh, Alf? Is that for Brian and Gail? Oh, I've not put my foot in it, have I? It's not your turn or something. Oh, I don't know whose turn it is. I don't remember being asked since Christmas. Ah, well, it's a dear do taking your missus out these days, you know. I know, but Gail deserves it, don't she? She's a hard-working little lass. She is. <laughs> See ya. Hey, Don, did you hear that? Our Brian and Gail are going out together tonight. Oh, well, things can't be too bad then, eh? Oh, it's wonderful news, isn't it? I've been worried sick, mate. Yeah, I know, you have. I wish I'd never said no. Well, can you blame me? I mean, the idea of our Brian hanging around in discos and such, where he's all responsible. Stag night, that's what I reckon. Anyway, he's entitled to the odd night off, you know. Oh, you'll be at it next, will you? <laughs> See you later. So <laughs> I love. Does Alan know what time it is? I mean, he hasn't forgot he's got a shop to run, has he? He's got underlings, hasn't he? Martin, that new girl, what's her name? Dawn. Dawn. What a corny name. Bet she's got a brother called Daybreak. Well, there's not corny about Dawn. From what I've seen, she's a very composed young lady. Well fetched up, I'd say. Even one or two morals lurking about. Mm. Yeah, I had the same tale from Martin. Mind mm. you, he put it a bit differently. Snooty, he says, saving herself from Mr. Wright. <laughs> Who'd be clean cut with the file effects. <laughs> Unlike Martin, who's sort of slightly smudged and writes things on fag packets. <gasps> I, um. Uh... I heard something else from Martin. Oh? Huh? I heard that Carol Burns turned up at the shop launch. Oof. Was it awful? It wasn't very nice. You talk about hanging your dirty washing out in public. Mm. Anyway, it proved one thing. It's all over between her and Alan. Mm. Well, we believed him, didn't we? Hey, mustn't miss my bus. I've got English first thing this morning. Oh. Hey, and the new teacher is gorgeous. Mm. It's just a shame he's in love with Jane Austen. 
Mind you, they'll be able to pay Virginia Woolf for the fines out. Is that the post? It's like a load of rubbish to me. It's not for you. Hey, is there out for me? Yeah. Um, do that. Um, there's a gas pill if you want it. Oh. Well, I don't know what smells nicer. You or that toast. <laughs> Look, Bernie, I've had a letter. I've got to be there. On the mat with me books and me answers. 3 p.m. prompt. That's this afternoon. Yes, for a, a further and hopefully final discussion about your backdated assessments. I mean, this is the crunch, Bernie. I need you there. I need your, how shall we say, immoral support. What, what do you mean, you're busy, you can't make it? Look, I've paid you good money over the years. Good God, man, you're my accountant. I'm relying on your financial wizardry to, you know, like one on one make eleven, not two. Alex, yes. a cup of tea with compliments. I, Will you be showing your face here? Oh. Yeah. oh, I see. Yes, I get it. It's abandoned Alec time, is it? Rats first, eh? Oh, don't be so stupid. Of course, I can't put them off till next week. The bloodhounds are at the door. It's either face the music or plead insanity. R right, right. Well, at least I've found you out, haven't I? Eh? Yes. Do you know, if I were in a golf club, I'd blackball you. I would blackball you. Wait a minute if you're going, they all love it. He's on the phone shooting to kill. Don't tell me, Betty. Sorry. I've had it all week. Mm. He's driving himself potty. Will he be told? Well, what's to do? I mean, if I can help. Nobody Bernie. can help, and I've lost patience. I've never heard the Queen call such names. What's the Queen got to do with income tax? You try telling Alec that. It taxes it. He won't settle. But what he can't see is the more he won't settle, the worse they get. They do these estimates. They make them ridiculous. They mention fines, even jail. It's all done to put the fear of God up you. And if you go there and cringe, it makes no difference. Oh, well, I mean, he's good at cringing, isn't he? He can flannel his way out of anything. It's paying out, Betty. He can't bring himself. I reckon it's all started with his Saturday shilling and the big lad's giving him Chinese burns. Oh, you, well, I can't sit in there mopping his fevered brow while this pub goes to rack and ruin. Oh, good morning, yeah. Um... Sorry, could you just hang on a second? Just the one. No. Uh, it's a query about my mortgage account. Yes, it's uh, Mr. Leonard Fairclough. Number seven, Coronation Street. But... Excuse me, Mr. Bradley, smoke detectors, where are they? They're under the counter. I told you that yesterday. Good God, we sell enough of them. And shut the door. Sorry about that. Uh, well, yes, it's to do with the mail that you send me from time to time. Yes, now, I'd like you to send everything to my business address and not to my home address. Just for the convenience of it, you know. Yes, it's Weatherfield Security Systems, 72 Curzon Street. That's right, yes, and I do mean all the mail, OK? Hey. That job I've just done, you know, the cosmetic I'm alarm. on the phone. Aren't they? That cosmetic alarm. I've heard uh, talks them into the old thing, you know, doors and windows. So? Well, I just wondered, you know, a bit of bonus, you know. I tell you what, Martin, go and put the kettle on and give yourself two sugars. How about that? Oh, cheers, mate. And shut the door behind you. Are they? Sorry, look. So what? You're going to write to me in what? Oh, confirmation, yeah. Uh, well, OK, yeah, as long as you send it to my business address. That's Mr. Leonard Fairclough. What have you said to him this morning, you? Nothing as I know of. I just keep getting these glares. Well, I've got no chance in, have I? I mean, you're better looking than me. Just. <laughs> hey, does he, uh, know you're not courting yet? He hasn't asked, and I haven't said. Does that mean you are? Because if you are, then shut up, don't I am. <laughs> Marty, would you mind knocking it off? I mean, you're secure, but I'm on approval. Well? I find this job a nice change so far, and Mr. Bradley obviously doesn't like skylarking. In any case, I don't like it either. Mm. Yes, can I help you? I'm <laughs> Mrs. Fairclough, look. <laughs> Is Alan in? Ah, oh, yes, of course. He's in the office. Right. Hiya. You couldn't take the boss out for lunch, have you? Or is it my lucky day? Well, if it's on your credit card, Martin. Mm -hmm. So, is this the glory hole, then? Uh, it's lovely, isn't it? Alison, you two, when I'm on the phone, I don't want to be disturbed, OK? Hey. Is this ruction time? Shall I need cotton wool in my ears? <laughs> How long have you been here? Just this minute. I thought you might fancy a spot of lunch. Out. Uh. Yeah, good idea. Why not? Um, you met Dawn, haven't you? Yeah, of course I have. I like her outfit, Mrs. Fairclough. I used to do fashion at college. Oh, well, thank you. Well, you're never less than dazzling, are you? <laughs> 
Right, well, come on then. Let's go. Uh, okay. Be back in about an hour or so. Bye, Take Mark. care of the shop. Bye, Bye. 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 Hey, we could try that. Uh, it's still there you go. <sighs> She's nice. They're very together. But he doesn't half have his mood, does he? He doesn't know what to expect. Tell me about it. And that woman has came to the shop launch and caused a fuss. Where does she fit in? <sighs> well, Shara can't be signing with me, Dawn. All will be revealed. Thank you, Betty. Okay, love it. Oh, excuse me. Can I uh, squeeze the rest? Thank you. Daddy, I can't understand why we've heard nothing. Well, these things take time. Oh, if I hear that once again, I mean, if you made an offer... I did exactly as you instructed, my dearest. I should have come with you. I mean, you possibly didn't sound too keen. Well, of course I didn't. Let's bump the price up. Well, maybe, but I mean, it's just not polite, Derek. You see, we're talking about other people's homes, and if you've already insulted the carpet and cast aspersions on the Spanish archway, not to mention calling Ulswar to drive, which is perfectly respectable, a debtor's retreat. I did nothing of the kind. I made a fair offer. And they said they'd contact the vendor. I still think I should go downtown and see for myself. Oh, Mavis, be sensible. You'll destroy our bargaining power. Mm. I'd much prefer it if you left this to me. You know, I was discussing our quest for the ideal home with DP. And we got onto literature. It's quite a bit on the subject, you know. Woodhouse, for example. Uh, PG. Mr. Blanding builds his dream house. It's my particular favourite. Well, I was quoting a passage, and DP, as is his wont, broke in and gave me a quote of his own. Down in the jungle, living in a tent, better than a prefab, no rent. <laughs> Tapa. Well, this is what you fancy, eh, Phyllis? Hey, another one of these, and I'd have been right set to give that Percy Sugden a right seeing too. <laughs> Do you know you're a loose woman, you are? Hey, well, it's the trend, <laughs> isn't it? Hey, did you know your uh, girl's going out on tiles yeah, tonight? Of course I know. I'm babysitting, aren't uh, I? Pity he's not at home, I reckon. But it's this modern setup. Hey, it would just suit me. There's no modern about Gail, not as you'd notice. Anyway, they're going out together, aren't they? No, they're not. Yes, they are. She's going out on a tub tonight. She told me, so I know it's a fact. Yes, hey, Betty. What? Where's Alec out of himself? He's like missing Link, isn't he? Don't mention Alec to me. We can't get a good word out of him. He's driving back potty in me spare. Why? He's in the back there. Papers all over the shop. But that calculator or, or whatever you call it, it's hitting the walls every five minutes. Yeah, sounds like VAT. Uh, Men die of that, you know. Yeah, Beth thinks it's tax. I think he's turned himself into a frog and he don't know how to get back to being human. It, well, there is a likeness, isn't there? Hey, I'll tell you what, if he cracks it, though, Beth will find herself married to six foot two inches of beefcake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Got it sorted, have you, love? Making progress, are you? Well, if only I knew how much they know. What exactly Newton and Ridley have said, how specific they find they've been about these unspecified entertainment expenses. But can I contact that rat, Cecil? Can I, Ella's like? We'll still have our income, love. Whatever they do to you. Yes, I know, but we we need money put by. It's taken me years, Bet. Years of hard slog. I've risked thumpings, I've dealt with real tough nuts, but I've always weaseled my way out. Ended up with them owing me. Now I get Her Majesty, with all she's got put in the boot in. I tell you, it's always the little man that catches it. Little man? Come off it. Think yourself lucky you've not diddled the social security out of Tuttons. They'd have really had you for breakfast. Yeah. Real comfort, aren't you, you? Oh, it's no good, but I can't go on like this. There's only one thing for it. Hang on. If this is surrender, it calls for a stiff brandy. No. Put everything in your name and declare myself bankrupt. You are? You can't do that, you daft beggar. You'd be cutting your own throat. You won't be able to run things if you go bust. Your agency would be finished. We'd lose the pub. Would Newton and Ridley let me take over? I should, Coco. Alec, there's only one thing for it. You must pay your tax. Folk have to from time to time. There is another option. What? Leave the country. A briefcase full of redis. Head for the Costa del Crime. I've got an awful feeling you're being serious. Oh, you did it. Aye, and where did I end up? Sweeping floors and cleaning tables. Until a little fat chap fetched me back to my senses.
Weatherfield Security Systems can I help you. Mr. Fairclough. Oh, I, uh... Who is it? Somebody after Mr. Fairclough. Oh, must be Mrs. Fairclough. Oh. Hello. Listen, I thought you dealt with all this. Oh, I see. Well, if I'm through to the right person at last, we'll go through it all again, shall we? Yes. Weatherfield Security Systems, that's right. 72 Curzon Street, that's right. Now, I want all the mail sent there. Yes. I mean, health plan suggestions, pension schemes, interest changes, all that. OK. So, if you'd be kind enough to feed that into your computer. Hey, Blondie, have you no better adders than these? They keep bouncing out. Go and play with your rattle, Sonny, will you? Oh, she wax work. You shouldn't keep them too close to the fire, you know. Less lip, laddie, or I'll bounce you out. Hey, do these lads know that it's still drink up time at three? They can please themselves. Listen, give Alec a shout. If they think we're on our own, they could start getting cheeky. I can handle it. Is he uh, still compass mentis, Alec? He's a drowning man, Betty, clutching at straws. Well, they usually do. You've not heard the latest. He's leaving the country. How did you guess? You tell me, lovey. Oh, blimey, my mind must be going and all. It must be catching. <clears throat> I hope. Uh, I'm just nipping out and uh, I might be some time. Might one inquire where you're off to? South America. Don't be long. Talk nicely to that inspector. You want the number nine bus coming back. Can we take it his coughing up? Oh, I'd say so, Betty. Right, you shower. Last game. Round the board in 25 hours. Who's taking me on? Hey, Alan. Don't forget, two turns of the key and it's deadlocked. Houdini's got no chance. OK, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Yeah, no. Where the hell's Martin got to? You should have finished that job ten minutes ago. Probably scarving in some cuff somewhere. He did say not to rush it, get his time in. Yeah, fair enough. But don't you ever say anything like that in front of a customer, will you? Not daft, Mr. Bradley. Yeah. Well, I just have to take your word for that, won't I? You only just joined us. Oh, by the way, uh, I won't be needing to come in so early in future. Oh? No. I'll be coming in myself about half eight, so I won't need you while nine o'clock. Are we opening later or something? No. Well, then how about the till and the post? I'll handle all that. Don't you trust me, Mr. Bradley? Well, it's early days yet, isn't it? You mean my work's not satisfactory? No, I mean it's early days. I'm weighing you up. You're weighing me up, aren't you? I mean, you might not suit. Don't worry, I won't be cutting your wages. Thanks very much. Uh, about time, too. Hey? Don't take root. I've got another job for you. Oh, what's up with him now? I think it must be me. I don't think I'm going to last long. Miles Platting, a full system. They want to quote. Go down there and measure yourself. Miles <sighs> Platting, have you seen the traffic out there? Dawn, get onto the airport and order him a helicopter, will you? <laughs> that was a joke. Does he think I'm thick or what? Hello, love. I'm just checking it's up, up. Hello, love. Oh, you're a good one. How's that steering state doing? On a low light and looking very tasty. Ooh, I'll tell you what, it's been all go today, Don. No, Vera. Ten pair of curtains. She's done. Upside down. A pattern with bottles on, would you believe? I mean, how daft can you get? Yeah, well, she's used to seeing bottles upside down, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, have you finished for today? Well, I've just got three old days to take to bingo at seven sharp, and that is it. Oh, if that's it. Vera coming for a moan, I don't want to know. I do. Hello, Alfred. I'm dead again, are we? Oh, I'd have brought me gun, wouldn't I? No, as uh, Sarah Louise left that little teddy bear. Yeah. Ah, she has that. She left it on the stairs and nearly broke my leg. <laughs> yeah, that's the animal. That's the brute. Well, I'm going to pop it round now. Yeah, well, uh, Audrey's babysitting and Gail's been on blower. Hey, are they going somewhere nice then, Brian and Gail? Well, I gather they're going their separate ways. Hey? Well, I think they've got uh, different arrangements this evening. Never. Not again. Come on, it were only last week our Brian were out gallivanting on his toss. Steady on, love. You're taking a lot for granted. There. Gallivanting? I don't think so, love. No, uh, couldn't again. It's some sort of game he's got on. You know, squash, I think she said. Oh, and where's Gail going then? Oh, well, she's going out with a pal of hers, Pauline. Well, it's a girl, a friend of theirs, getting married. It's their party. Well, I think it's a damn shame shooting off on their own. I tell you what, if I was Audrey, I wouldn't go. Oh, nay. It's not out, love. It's just perfectly routine. Routine, my hat. You saw our Brian last week in discos and such, and now girls off to end parties all over the shop. Now, look. I don't care. 
There's no way to carry on. I'm sorry, Derry, but I really am annoyed. I mean, I, I feel you've been devious. Oh, that's good, coming from you. Well, I told you I was going to make inquiries. Oh, never mind. I, I just feel checked up on. Oh, well, I'm sorry. But it's just as well I did go in. At least we know the house is gone now and we know why. Yes, we've been gazumped. Gazumped? <laughs> we weren't even at first base with that silly offer you made. I mean... £10,000 below the asking price, and I go in like a fool. They must think we're both straight out of the egg. Could we have lived with that Spanish arch? <sighs> Could we have asked DP for drinks oh, there? DP, DP, everything seems to revolve around DP. You said you fancied the pictures. Shall we make a move? No, I've changed my mind. I'd rather stay in now with a good book. I haven't got a good book. Yes, you have. It comes monthly and I can order it for you. The weekend builder? Well, you seem to have some hang-up about buying property. So, if Mr Blandings can build his dream house, so can you. Hey, hey. Give us a good stiff orange juice for you, Bessie. Loads of ice and parched. Working yard as Ellen Bradley. Oh, we never stop. When it comes to closing time, it's fancy working late, Martin. Oh, dear. Man, you really want me seeing me again today? Yeah. I'm stuck in the traffic jam outside Miles <laughs> Plus. <in. laughs> His lips back, is he? <laughs> yes, half an hour since. I told him you'd nipped out to buy a mink. You're a pal. Yeah. <laughs> hey, be gentle with him. He's nursing a bottle. Medicinal or euphoric? Well, you lost me there, lovey. Bessie? I know, I'm not. Ah, the man himself. Taking a tot, I see. Shall I get a glass? Is it a wake or is it a wedding? Oh, it's a facer, Bet. It really is. It's a real facer. Oh, I shouldn't have got the mink coat then. Eh, hey, what the hell? It's beyond brass, is this? Well, if it's blood they're after, I'm ready to give. Uh, but I shall want coffee and biscuits. They're after my soul, Bet. That is a facer. Have you got one? Because I've not noticed one at wardrobe. It's all that Cecil Newton's flaming fault. Him and his unspecified entertainment expenses. And at the crunch, he's gone to ground and, and Newton and Ridley have played ball. With the tax people? Yes, they've got all the figures, everything I've had off the brewery from years back. Booking turns for the boozers. Yeah, well, you know the deal. I took 25%, the other 75% I paid the lads and lasses. They thought, I thought, it was back pocket job. Note said. So, you've got to pay a tax on your cut? Oh, I... That's if I tell them who's had the rest, if I shop all my artistes. If I do that, my name will be Mud. And if you don't? And they'll have me for the lot. So, it's pay up or name names? That's it. That's the face. Uh... It's gone six, love. Time we're getting our coats on. Right, Mr Bradley, I'll just get these done. There you go. Don't forget to put them the right way up. Will do, but why? Well, so the customers can see the labels. We don't get many Australians in here, you know. <coughs> Weatherfield Security Systems. Oh, hello, love. Ah, just about to ring you. Dinner will be on the table in ten minutes. Can we expect you? Uh. Well, I uh, haven't locked up the shop yet. Oh, hey, listen, you need a Mavis, you do. Yeah, well, uh, I'm a bit lumbered with the dawn at the moment. No, I mean, I don't know, but I think I might have to get rid. But anyway, uh, listen, I've got a bit of paperwork to do, so... I'll be off now, Mr. Could Bradley, you just hang on. that's OK. Could, it, could you hang on a second? Um, listen, love, uh, I'll be about an hour. Is that all right? I mean, there's well, nothing, nothing going to spoil, is it? Well, so long as it is just an hour, I might just miss you. Not another minute, I promise. OK, love, bye. So will you be wanting me out the road then tonight? I mean, we can't sit down for a meal these days without me feeling as if I'm playing gooseberry. Get away, will you bother? <laughs> right, uh, I just wanted to say... Thanks. Oh, yes. You've worked very hard today. I think, uh, once you learn the ropes, you're going to be quite a master. Pardon? You've done very well. I'm very pleased. Me? Why would you think that? Oh, yeah. I know, I've been uh, been a bit edgy today, but that's because of all the teething problems we've got here. No, no, I think... Uh, I think we're going to work well together. Phew, I'm glad that's sorted. 
I got a girl, miss me, bro. So right, I'll give you a lift. But as we way, ain't it? No, no, not so. As a matter of fact, we could uh, stop off on the way and uh, get a drink. I'm not pushed for an hour or so. Fine. Oh, it's a bitter, isn't it, Audrey? Hey, no, what's all this? I've been told about your Brian. What about him? Gallivanting, I think, were the word that we used. Oh. Well, come on, lady, you should know it were you that used her. Whoever I was speaking to, Audrey, I was speaking to them. If they chose to spread it around, that's their lookout. Gallivanting, you said, Ivy, said, didn't you? Oh, hello, Ivy, love. Oh, excuse me, I've just forgotten the, um... <clears throat> Do you know, I think it's a poor too when one's own mother starts telling tales on you. Telling tales? I thought Alf was family. If he's not, I beg your pardon, I won't say another word. It's a poor do when I can't say I'm worried to family. But what you worried about, Ivy? I mean, our girl's not worried. I'd be the first to know if she was. If she's not worried, what's up with you, then? Now it's up with me, it's you that's mouthing. Right. If you want to know some at Audrey, ask Gail. I shall ask Gail now. The last thing Brian and she wants is one nosy Parker and mother-in-law, let alone two. Right, I'm off. So early. How long are you going to keep this up, then? It's a new regime, Jenny. More working hours means more work. More work means more money. What does <clears> more <throat> money mean? More tax. It means I can afford to pay the wages of that good-for-nothing staff of mine. Hey, that's a friend of mine you're talking about. Yeah. Maybe one day I'll get a decent day's work out of him. What have I done with my gloves? Behind you. Oh, thanks. What would I do without you, eh? You get uh, chill blains. Anyway, I hear this new girl Dawn's not so clever. Oh, yeah? You could have only heard that from one person. Well, you should have told us if it were top secret, Alan. So what are you going to do then? Back her. No, I'm going to give her a chance. If she shapes up, OK. If not... If not, you'll keep her on cos her dear old mother's sick and you wouldn't see her starving, would you? Of course you won't sack her, just like you won't sack Martin. Cos you're a big softie, aren't you? Me? Soft? <laughs> I'm ruthless, woman. Ruthless. No, you're not. You're a softie. Hey. My heck. I thought I'd seen the last of these. Well, How long do you have to be dead before this stop writing to off, you? Jenny. Go on, it's a letter. Get off, Jenny. Ah, it's a letter for Len. <sighs> Oh, it's about the house. Is your house one of the few that still doesn't enjoy the benefits of gas central heating? If so, consider the blah, 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 blah. Oh, mister, these mailing lists. Huh. Do deal with a company that was four years out of date, eh? Uh, Don't tear it up, love, I'll, uh, I'll get on to them. OK. Uh, <clears throat> right, I'll be off. <clears throat> Sorry I shouted, love. It's all right. Ta-da. Ta-da, love. Is it hot pot today? Yeah, love, yeah, it is. Sausage and mash as well. Somewhat straightforward, you know. Alex's favourite. Don't let on. He'll only be back for it. Why? Where's he got? Never to the accountant again. No, drumming up work. Getting jobs for his acts and going round clubs. Something an agent should do, but mm. seldom does unless he's desperate. <laughs> I take it that's not yours truly we're discussing. Eh, uh, Betty, look. Don't he look smart? The very picture of your successful entrepreneur. Mm. Yeah, some entrepreneur. Don't suppose I'll be back while tea time. Foot sore and humiliated. I think I'd just better get these pots washed, lovey. Uh, Betty, <laughs> what? Uh, them sausages in the kitchen, uh, they aren't for dinner, are they? Um, it's, it's a shame you won't be back for it. <laughs> Excuse me, Alec. It's a story of my life, that, isn't it? Hey, love, your face looks set in concrete. Well, is it any wonder with this Spanish Inquisition? Name names, they say. I name names, there'll be a dozen or so acts using my name as a swear word. Well, don't, then. But if I don't, I'm going to be assessed as though I've earned a flaming fortune. Forty percent of a fortune's a hell of a lot of money bet. It's a dilemma. I mean, there's no question about it. It's a dilemma. Alec, I want you to answer me something straight. What? Now, it might be a hard one, this. What's most important to you? Your bank balance? or your loyalty to your clients? Yes, it is a hard one, that. Yeah, but I want you to think about it. Because when you've got the answer to that one, Chucky Egg, I think you've got your answer. Right, we're seeing you then. Yeah, thank All you. Right. What? What's that? It's my toolbox. A cardboard box? That's very impressive, Martin. Well, you should give us a proper one then, shouldn't you, eh? 
You should supply your own toolbox. All workers supply their own toolboxes. That's the first thing they do. Yeah. I mean, what's it going to look like? You turning up on the job with your tools rattling around in a cardboard box? What difference does it make? It makes a lot of difference, Martin. Yeah. Appearances count for a lot in this game. Is that not right, Dawn? What? Why? Well, Martin here thinks he can turn up for work looking like he sells mop heads. Uh, don't involve me. I mean, you wouldn't carry your purse around in a Tesco bag, would you? Oh, she might do if she just bought it or something. All right, what happens if it rains? It gets soggy. All right. Martin. What? Take your cardboard box and go and wait in the car. You're worse than useless. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. How come you keep putting me down? And does he do this to you, Don? In fact, don't answer me. I don't want to know. Just smarten yourself up, lad. That's all. OK. I'll come with my dinner jacket tomorrow. You cheeky little f You looking very nice today, don't you? Thanks. Listen, I've, uh, I've got an appointment down by the Odeon this morning. I thought I might, uh, might have lunch in that bistro. Would you care to join me? I'm not sure. I'm paying. Do you want to take Martin out for me? <laughs> You're going to be joking. Why me, then? Well, there's a bit of a difference, isn't there, eh? I mean, I don't want to sit across the dinner table looking at his ugly mug and do that all day at work. I didn't give you the wrong impression when you drove me home last night. You weren't just driving Look, me home. All I'm saying is, would you like a spot of lunch? That's all. OK, thanks. It's no big deal. No. No big deal, just lunch. Right. Don't tell Martin all the same. I'll uh, pick you up about one, eh? Take care of the shop. OK. Oh, Christine, love, have you got a minute? Of course, yet. Oh, dear, state of these gloves. Look at them. My chain's been off four times. Oh, you see, the last of them for wearing long. <laughs> they didn't tell me it were a mucky job. <laughs> Listen, on your way to the cafe? Trying to, yeah. Would you be a love and give Gail a message for me? OK, yeah. Will you ask her to pop round this evening before she goes Oh, for just for a minute? Mm -hmm. Yep. Ah, yeah, a little love. Listen, why don't you try me to wash up liquid around them gloves? I'll dry the bin. See ya. <laughs> see you, love. Semi-detached? Yes. In red brick? In red brick, yes. yes. Does it have a garden? Small garden, yes. Oh. With a bird table. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> well, I can't guarantee anything, but from the outside it looks promising. Oh, yes. can I see it then? Well, why not strike while the iron's hot? How about after dinner? Have you made an appointment? Uh, no, but um, if there's no one in, we can squint through the windows. It'll give us some idea, at least. <laughs> I'm going to go squinting through windows, Derek. Well, I see no harm in it, Mavis, and they want to sell the place, don't they? Yes, love. Uh, what's it to be, Mavis? I'll have a sweet sherry. Right. And a pint of your very best bitter, at oh, least. Right. You want a packet of crisps as well? I thought we were going to have dinner. If dinner you want, Mavis, and dinner it shall be. Sausage and mash today. Oh, oh how much is that, then? Get stuck in there, Derek, mate. Lovely grub, Betty. That's a good clean plate. You can have pudding now. <laughs> It's 99p for your drinks, plus two pounds if you both have sausages. Oh. Well, I don't know whether Mavis wants sausages. Oh, okay. You want sausages, Mavis? Well, if I'm to go <coughs> squinting through people's windows, I'd better have some... <laughs> Sausage and mash twice, Betty. OK, please. don't. Don't look so worried. It might never happen. Families, who'd have them, eh? Yeah, I'll drink to that. Uh, what are you having? Oh, so I'll just have a half. What is all this about, Brian? What? Well, you know, what, yesterday, Gallivanti, what, what I was on about yesterday. Oh, no. Word of advice, Alan. What the eye doesn't oh, see... Yeah, yeah, yeah that's all very well. All I did was mention to order what Ivy had said, and she was replying off every handle in sight. She's been round to Gales, stirring things up. What is going off? Oh, I doubt it's anything, no. It's just that I saw Brian clubbing, that's all. On his own, that's all. And like an idiot, I told Ivy. She put two and two together and made 90. Yeah, so it's you I've got to blame, on, I think. Hey, you and me both, mate, listen. My mistake was telling Ivy, your mistake was telling Ivy. You're right there. Uh, I'm the chairman. What do you want? Oh, uh, uh, hello, Al. Hello, Al. I'll have a tonic water, please. Oh, come on. You're better than that. Uh, no, tonic water's fine. Oh, hey, listen, I won't have time for that half after all. I've left Sally in the shop over time. You know, I'll have a strike on my hands. Yeah, well, you sure? Yes, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. Blimey, is it my centre, what? He eh? likes life on an even keel. And what's that supposed to mean? Yes, flower. A tonic water and an orange juice, please, Bet, love. He lasts with the big spenders, eh? Everybody's getting a state about this Brian business. I don't know. Perhaps it's better to let them sort them out themselves. Okay. I mean, if they are having troubles, it won't help us sticking his oars in, will it? You're right, love. 
Huh? You're right. Best leave him to it. Oh, fine. Man's knee tonic water. Oh, here's the thing. I never expected to see him back this dinner. I thought, poor Alec, and it's his favourite sausages as well. Oh, do you know my feet are killing me? Are there any of them sausages left, Betty? Come on, love, I'll fetch them through. Oh, oh. Yes, and a beer. And a beer. Yes, it's all down there. Uh, no, as I was saying, the, the door at the moment is painted brown. Uh, thank you, Betty. But I think with a little imagination, we can see beyond that. Oh, it sounds like a right little love nest. Yes, and then there's the bird table. <laughs> Mavis thinks I'm dragging my heels on the house-seeking front. I hope you realise, Mavis, that I'm just biding my time, waiting for the right place to come along. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to seeing it, Derek. But, I mean, if it comes to it, I just hope you're not going to make a silly offer like you did last time. Trust me, Mavis. Trust me. Yeah, my little vanilla. Uh, Get stuck into that. Right, hey, do you know, whatever else you say about Betty, she can certainly cook a sausage. <laughs> Are you sure you're all right with that beer? After all that traipsing around, I would have thought you'd want a whiskey to warm you. Oh, no. Whiskey and bangers don't sit happily together. It's a question of sympathy. Ale and bangers are definitely sympathetic. Well? Well? Have you decided? I mean, my clients are the taxman. Uh, it's a big one, isn't that? What's important, though, Alec, is whatever decision you come to, can you look yourself in the eye after? How do you mean? Well, just say that you did shop your clients. Would you really be able to face yourself? Oh, certainly. That won't worry you? No, I'm being done, aren't I? Why should I be the only one in the mire? No, what worries me, you see, if I do shop my clients, they're not going to stay on my books, are they? I'll finish up with no axe, and then where am I? And what I'm worried about, Bet, is my future. <laughs> Right, there you go, pal. Hungry? Could eat, yes. Get your coat. Why did you say don't yeah. tell Martin? Well, he's such a kid, isn't he? You know, he'll start jumping to conclusions, acting stupid. It doesn't matter. If you want to tell him, tell him. It doesn't matter. You ready? Yeah. Back at school. I'm on my way, aren't I? What via Curzon Street? It's a very strange route, Jenny. Yes. Hiya. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, Dawn, you don't know my daughter, do you? This is Jenny Dawn. So how do you like working for the big bad boss then? Okay, so far. Only okay. You listen your charm, Dad. Right, well I'll see you then, eh? What? I'll see you back here at two o'clock sharp, okay? Oh, oh, oh right, yeah. Okay, right. Sedano. See what you mean? Dizzy or what? Is that why you came here to give her the once over? I just came here to say hello, didn't I? Get in the car, you. I'm going to drive you to school, okay? Rita said she'd be in the rovers when Mary's Yes, got I know. That's where I'm going. Get it written. It hurts, Bet. But you've got it to do, Alec. It's as clear as the day. A little extra to the taxman, and then it's done with. And it looks like you've done right all round. I know better, but then that's between you and me. Pay up, Alec. It's only money. Only money, she says. I'm blood's only blood. I can't afford it, Bet. There's only one way I can make it up, you know. What's that? Wally Simpson's Middle East tour. I've got to have some cash coming in, proper cash. Well, we'll talk about that. Come here. Uh, what do you do it? Inland. Revenue. How much? No, stop that. Come on. You do realise what you're doing to me. How much, Alec? Alec, it's a bit like drawing teeth. When it's done, the pain stops. I promise. Alec, how much? Eight thousand pounds. Eight. 
Hey, flipping heck, Ali. You see, I told you, didn't I? Oh, no, you don't. Come here. Eight thousand pounds. Sign. Well, that was really nice. I didn't expect you, to be honest. Well, to be honest, I didn't expect myself. I mean, if Jenny hadn't catch the lift to school, I'd have probably spent my dinner hour working. Well, good for Jenny. My guess is she wanted her on the rule over your girl, Dawn. Yeah, that's my guess and all. I don't think she was all that impressed, actually. Oh, well, I think she's attractive. Yeah? Mm. Yeah, I suppose so. I'm a bit dizzy. Mind you, Martin's been at her like a fly at the jam. I've had to slap him down. Oh, that poor lad. I don't know how he puts up with you. I do. He needs the job. Anyway, listen, I've got to get back. The newlyweds want to get off house hunting again. Oh, not again. When are they going to stop hunting and start buying? Uh, perhaps never. I'd have something to say if I was you. You've been here nearly all dinner time on your own, serving food and drinks. Hey, if they left me like that to cap it, I'd have something to say. I don't mind, love. It beats hanging about. It's what I'm paid for, you see. Hey, it's something wrong. What, love? Look, I bet she looks like she's lost a pound and found five. I think that's just about what she has done, though. Now then, ladies, how's the world outside this giddy house? Uh, I'm just off, OK? Yeah, see you tomorrow. Oh, hey, have you got a minute? Come on. I'm sorry about this dinner time. Um, I just thought, you know, that it was better Jenny didn't see us going off together. She's a very impressionable kid. That's OK. Did you get something to eat? Oh, yeah, just a sandwich. It was quite useful. I had a few things to do. Good, good. So, we'll, uh, we'll have lunch together some other time, OK? Um, maybe not. Why? Well... It looks a bit complicated to me. Why? Well... You're... It's obviously not right for you. How do you mean? It seems to me that you taking me out has got more to it than just... well, taking me out, doesn't it? All I said was, do you want a spot of lunch? That's all I said. But you have to pretend you're not taking me out. So... It looks as if you're... It... It doesn't look as simple as just a meal. Otherwise you'd be more open about it, wouldn't you? You don't know my daughter. She's at that age where she reads everything into anything, you know what I mean? Now, I had this uh, affair, whatever you want to call it, with Carol Burns, and Jenny knows about that. And I just don't want her to think that I make a habit of it, you know? And uh, she will. I mean, if she'd seen you and me walking off together, her little mind would have been working overtime. Do you see? Yes. Good. So, we'll have lunch together some other time, OK? Look, honest, I've got to go. My boss goes in a minute. Hey, uh, there's a fella out here wants a combination lock. Have we got one? I'll see you. See you more. OK, sit down, eh? Stay beautiful now, eh? Have we got a combination lock or what? Martin, how long have you worked here? Hello, love. Come in. I'm spitting Shelley out there. Thanks. Christine said you wanted me. Uh. Oh, it was nothing special, love. Uh, would you like a cup? It's brewed. Yeah, quickly then. I can't stop. Pauline's got the kids. Well, sit down then. Uh, listen, uh, I've seen a lovely little suit in Hobson's, by the way, and uh, I thought it looked smashing on Sarah Louise. Did you? Yeah, it's uh, cotton and it's ever so cheap. But that's and it's... not why you asked me round here. What do you mean, girl? You didn't ask me round here to talk about children's clothes. I've had my mam in the cafe this morning. 
Seems my marriage is more public than Prince Charles's. Thanks. Look, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I don't mean to poke my nose in love, but uh, I am concerned about what's happening between you and Brian and... Gail, if there's something wrong with all I want to do is help. I don't think you do help, though, Ivy. How does it help going round blabbing to folk that Brian's going out on his own? For one thing, why shouldn't he go out on his own? Well, if you feel it's all right about him going out on his own, that's fine. I feel perfectly all right about it. <laughs> well, there you are. That's all I wanted to know. As far as I'm concerned, Ivy, he can go out when he wants and as much as he wants. Uh, good evening. Hello, Alec. I'll uh, have a grapefruit juice, please. That is if Derek thinks we can afford it. Don't be silly, Mavis. A grapefruit juice, please, and, um, oh, two grapefruit juices. Two grapefruit juices. I don't know what's brought all this on, Mavis. It was a perfect house, Derek. It's just what we're looking for. But I don't see why we can't make an offer. Do you realise what the repayments are on a mortgage that size? The property's just getting more expensive, Derek. It's certainly not getting any cheaper. Patience, Mavis, is the watchword. We hold our fire, we build a bigger deposit. That way we pay less interest and more goes where it should, on the house. Uh, and this is where I came in. Good evening, Mavis. Good evening, Derek. Are we having a good time? Yeah, two grapefruit juices. I just don't think you've got any intention of buying. I think all you want to do is go around poking in other people's homes, opening cupboards, looking under the beds. It, it's embarrassing, Derek. I mean, what do you expect to find under the beds? You can't be too careful, Mavis. Excuse me. What? Oh, oh, two grapefruit juices. I shouldn't have gone round to our girls. I mean, I just wound her up. So it's not going to help anything, is well, it? Well, I don't think it does, no, actually. <sighs> well, look, if his own mother says that he's playing around, there must be some truth in Yeah, that. but Audrey, I mean, getting on to Gaylers, she was the last one you should be I getting know, on to. I know, I know I shouldn't have. Do you think you could have a word with Brian? No, I could not. Definitely not, Audrey. Not in hundred years. No. Well, should I have a word with our Brian Gale? No. Well, I could do, love. I'm sure I'd make him see sense. Come on, this makes no sense, what he's doing now. Ivy, it's between me and him, no one else. I know he goes out. I know he goes to clubs and discos. I don't know where he goes afterwards. I don't want to know. I think I'd better go. Well, you're going to have to stop him, why? Stop him? Why? Well, your marriage won't survive it, I can promise you that. You don't know what you're talking about, Ivy. Of course I know what I'm talking about, love, honest. Look, our Brian's a good lad and he cares for you, but he's like all other men, love. You mustn't let him think he's free to wander off, whatever you do. But he is free. What do you mean? I mean, it's too late. We've tried. God knows we've tried. But it doesn't work. Me and Brian, we just don't work. Now, I don't know what else I can say to you, Ivy. He's free to do whatever he wants. But you love each other, Gail. You do love each other. No, Ivy. That's the point. We don't. Now, I think I better get the kids. <coughs> Yes? Mrs. Bishop? Mr. Sugden? This is number three. Uh, oh, yeah, you were bright and early, aren't you? That's the way we operate. Prompt, efficient service with a smile. Oh, well, we'll see about the efficient when you've done the job. You better go inside and see the lady of the house, Mrs. Bishop. Thanks. Oh, improvement there. Eh? Mm, we're having double glazing put in. Oh, well, I thought you and Emily Twinset were cosy enough in there without that. <laughs> Double glazing just doesn't keep the heat in. It keeps the noise out, which is very necessary living in the same street as you. Especially when you and your husband are coming back from the pub. It used to be right fond of red sails in the sunset. You are! Ivy! Hello, Ivy. 
Where is everybody? Uh, well, Kevin's just popped out with a customer on a, on a test run. Well, really, it should be a squeak run, because he reckons he's got a squeak. <laughs> and I'm just here, uh, resting. Mid-jog. Where's Brian? Uh, well, he's not here. I don't think he'll be long, though. I'll wait for him. You do it yellow. <laughs> Why didn't you give me a shout? I did. Couldn't be much of a shout. Well, it would have woke me. Still, I wasn't out till two o'clock this morning. It wasn't two o'clock. was by my watch. You were asleep when I came to bed. I'm never asleep when you come to bed, Brian. I got bags under my eyes to prove it. Gail, I thought you couldn't... Could you come to the garage with your dad? Uh, what about school? He's on holiday. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, soldier. I've got a lot on today. Uh, being this late won't help. I'll see you tonight, eh? He's always going out, isn't he? He has to go to work. I don't mean that. I mean at night as well. Well, I think I've recovered enough now to carry on. <laughs> oh, here's someone now. It could be Kevin, but then again, it could be Brian. Brian! Hello, Mum. What are you doing here at this time of the morning? I'm waiting to see you. Uh, well, I'll get off now. Uh, if you see Kevin, tell him I'll meet him in the Rovers at dinner time. Okay. See ya. wrong. Gail tells me that you and her are going your separate ways these days. When did she tell you that? Last night. Would she not tell me she'd seen you last night? No, well, you were probably out gallivanting. Like you are most nights for why you. Is it true, Brian? What? That you and Gail are, for all practical purposes, leading separate lives. The my side of the bed was definitely slept in last night. Probably still warm. Don't get clever with me. We don't go out much now. What, never? Not recently. And what sort of a marriage is that, Brian? Not much of one. And it's not all my fault, you know. I'm not saying it is, but you're the one that keeps going out, aren't you? What do you expect me to do, stop in a knit? Look, keep going out on your own isn't gonna... Well, it's not gonna mend things, is it, Brian? I mean, you're just gonna make things a lot worse. You're blaming me, aren't you? I've told you, Mum, it's not my fault. I know it's not. What else has Gail told you? Nothing. Look, Mum. I've really tried to make it work this time. I really have. Well, try harder. Going out gallivanting isn't trying, it's giving up. Look, you've been given a second chance, haven't you? Both of you have. Surely you're not. You can't be that wicked you're going to throw this one away as well, Brian. If not for your sakes, for... Well, for the sake of them two lovely little ch children. Please, Brian. Please. I think I'm going to be very bored today. Oh dear, I am sorry. I mean, can we book you a quick flight on Concord or something? We don't want you being bored, do we, Ken? I got a better idea. She can help me dish out the paper today. She's a bit young, Ken. No, no, I'm only joking. Oh, God knows I could do with some help today. The shelf life of a paper person seems to be about one week, and then they vanish behind the embarrassed excuses from their mothers. Perhaps it's because you don't pay them enough money. Oh, yeah, and how much would you say was enough? Ten pounds. Ten pounds? I don't want them to write and produce a paper for that. Ten pounds. That was wealth beyond the dreams of avarice when I was a lad, and still is, as far as I'm concerned. Deborah King gets ten pounds spending money every week, and she's gone skiing this week. Explain to her the economics of this family, will you, love, before she bankrupts us? <laughs> Bye. Bye, love. Bye. Bye, Dad. Listen, young uh, Jason Stubbs, you know, Sandra's lad yeah. at the Rovers, he'll be at a loose end today, and he's a professional paper person. Where do they live? Well, she'll be in the Rovers now. Right. Bye. See you, love. <sighs> well, we could do uh, an enormous shop. All right, you just have to be bored, then. I bet Deborah King's not bored skiing. Ah, but she could be breaking her leg. Brian? You took your time. I do have a cap if you want. I shouldn't be here now by rights this close to dinner time. Why didn't you come and see me? Whatever it is, it's so urgent. It's urgent and it's private. What's the idea of upsetting me, Mum? Come again? She was in here this morning, nearly crying. I only told her what she wanted to know. Why? 
Why did she have to be told anything? Because she asked Brian. I told her not to push it. I told her it was our business, but she insisted. You know what she's like. Like a dog with a bone when she thinks there's something going on she should know about. Why didn't you just tell her to mind her own business or, or lied even? No, I couldn't, Brian. She knew most of it already. She knew you were going out on your own. How? Don saw you going into a nightclub. You made sure she knew the rest. She wanted to be put in the picture, Brian. I put her in the picture. And I bet you enjoyed it. No, I didn't. I don't want to upset you, ma'am. Well, you did upset her. What else did you tell her? What else? Yeah, besides saying I was going out on my own a lot. Did she say I'd set out? No, she hinted. Oh, Gail, you've done a right hatchet job on me, haven't you? I mean, thanks a bunch. I did no such thing, Brian. I told her the truth. Well, tell me it! Because I don't know what truth is. All I know lately is that you've been treating me like I've got a disease or something. I'm sorry, I wondered if my car was ready yet. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, this Mrs. Braithwaite. I'll just get you the keys. Uh. I think you'll find it's running okay. It's, uh, it's parked outside. You could have cut the atmosphere with a knife. Brian's mum was definitely uptight. Well, I don't know how Kevin can work in an atmosphere like that. Well, no, I couldn't. Look, work's hard enough as it is without a marriage falling to pieces round you. Oh, I don't think it's as bad as that, Cheryl. It sounds like it to me. Viva la difference. That's a culprit, you know, la difference. Okay. The natural differences between male and female, physically, emotionally, mentally. That's what causes all these rows, you know, and breakups. I mean, look at me and Shirley. I didn't know we were breaking up. No, I'm not a surface person like Shirley is. Thank you very much. You know, pass another remark like that and we will be breaking up. <laughs> no, 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 no. What I meant is, a great deal of my life is lived within my own head. You mean you have lots of mucky thoughts, dear Curly? Hey, he does as well, you know. You want to see when he's watching a sexy woman or a sexy bit of our telly? Goes just like Benny Hill, does I'm <laughs> trying to discuss a serious subject. Sorry. You see, women have no interest in the abstract. If it hasn't got a life and a form, they're just not interested. Well, what about love? Love? Oh. Love doesn't have a life and a form, does it? Women are far more into love than fellas are. Here, here. Yeah, well, that's the exception that proves the rule. And that's what people who are talking a load of rubbish usually are. Look, look, can we change the subject? This is far too metaphysical for you two. Anyway. Anyway what? It's not la difference, it's la difference. Oh, hello. Didn't see you across there this morning. Uh, I'm not in today, dear. No. Yes, madame. Your usual champagne cocktail, smoked salmon, twist of lemon, eh? I'll have a lager and a plate of hot pot, and less of the old book. Yes, madame. Very nice. See so you having double glazing for in the night? Yes, that's right. Mm, you've got to be posh, you, aren't you? What's up? In one pane of glass good enough for you, or what? Well, it makes for a cosier home, Vera, as well as being energy efficient. Yeah. Keep noise out as well, eh? That's an added bonus, yes. Mustache. Bye. There we are, madame. Emily Twin stretches on me a double glazing for in. I didn't know she wore glasses. <laughs> Can't you ever be serious, you, eh? I'm a laugh a minute, me, huh? Well, you won't get a laugh a minute on a stage as a comet, you. You won't get a laugh an hour. You know why she's having double glazing for in? No idea, Vera. Because she reckons we make so much noise coming home from here that she's better than anybody else, sir. Always has done. I don't here. think it's got nothing to do with that. Well, what is it then? I think it's because of the sound of my voice, especially raised in song at night while she's in bed. It must drive her sexually crazy. Well, I'll tell you something. No else you've got, Wood. Oh, it's our love. My daughter just loves crisp sandwiches. Oh, I've never tried that. With lots of brown sauce on. Oh, that thing's kids have got. <laughs> no. Oh, did uh, Ken manage to get hold of you, by the way? Oh, yeah, I told him to go and root out, Jace. No one would be watching telly. Or he might even have gone back to bed. I mean, how is it lads can spend so much time lying in bed? I mean, fast asleep as well. Uh, I used to do my share of kipping. I told my mother it was because I was growing too fast. <laughs> I'll see. <laughs> Hello, mate. You're the telly man. <laughs> What's 
ask her you. No, thank you. Fifty-five. Sam brass for spending, you know. Brass we could do with spending on the house, because God knows it needs some spending on it. Ah, well, you know the answer to that, don't you? Oh, ah, uh, what's that? Stop stopping. And what about you stopping? I am perfectly satisfied with the house. Yeah, well, you'll be satisfied in a rattle, you. Oh, hi, Brian. <laughs> Something going on there, you know. What? Well, Ivy were late into work this morning, you know, face like a rusty old clog iron. Just like his. I was just wondering if uh, Dom started gambling again, you know. Or Gail's got pregnant again with an Australian. Now, well, you've got no worries like that, have you, love? I mean, your house is a haven of peace and contentment, isn't it? <laughs> Half a bit, please. Thirty percent. Afternoon. Got your windows for in yet, have you? Hey? Got your windows for in it yet, have you? Yes, we've got a couple. And we're already feeling the benefit of it, Mrs. Bishop and I. Oh. But it should put a few pounds on the value of the property, I shouldn't wonder. You all right, Vera? No, I'm not. All right, well, that looks a bit better. Nothing we can do about that lamp, though. No. So, things could have been worse. John Wayne would have turned the place to matchwood. <laughs> Yeah. You, uh, feel like taking these papers for me then, or not? Yeah, I'll take them. Good, good. The Fernley Estate. Couple of pounds, all right? Yeah. Right. And thanks. I'd, uh, I'd choose my friends better if I were you, Jason. Right. Look, I know what you're going to say, mate, and you're right. But I shouldn't have opened my mouth. I'm sorry. But I, I thought I was just telling Ivy about you going into that club. <laughs> no, that's a good one, isn't it? Just telling Ivy. I mean, I might as well have had posters printed. Why did you tell her? Look, not to start it. Honestly. The last thing in my mind. It just slipped out in casual conversation. Look, I hope you believe that because I've never told tales on anybody. Getting it from all directions. Oh, it's okay. Remember to find out sooner or later. <sighs> my mother and me missus. What a combination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it all just crept up on me. Damn it, I should have seen it coming. Well, who does? You know, I really thought me and Gail were doing all right. I mean, even though it wasn't exactly mind blowing second time round. But we're all back together again. I mean, that's all that mattered. I mean, I knew it'd be a bit different after what happened. Both of us a bit wary. Well, bound to be. Yeah, but we soon got back into that groove, though, you know, work, kids. That's what marriage is all about, isn't mm. it? Yeah. Especially when you're young. Mm. Still kept playing me squash, though. You no, know, that was like a break. I and mean, Gail didn't seem to mind, at least she never said she minded. We'd have a couple of pints afterwards, and then we'd spread onto a club now and then. I mean, still no objections. I mean, I'm only human, aren't I? Well, of course you are, mate. It was birds. I mean, I, I didn't go looking for them, right? It was nothing like that. It was... It was just inevitable. Gail still never said a thing. Well, perhaps Gail didn't know. Oh, she knew I was out till all hours. I mean, what do you think she thought I was doing? Driving a bus? If it had been you, my mum would have gone mad, wouldn't she? <laughs> She'd have killed me. Still love her, you know. Hi. Where's Greta Garbo? Greta Garbo? Yeah, she used to sit around a lot, looking bored, didn't she? <laughs> Hi, hello. Hi. Uh, she's gone round to Amanda's to see if Amanda's boyfriend's phoned her over the holiday. She's hoping he hasn't because she fancies him. Oh, right. Well, I could make a sexist remark about wily women, but I won't. Good. You managed to get your papers delivered, all right? Well, my army of deliverers, all ten of them, are at this moment winding their winged ways down every highway and byway. And if they don't get bored and chuck the papers over the nearest hedge, I should be all right this week. Oh, but 
<clears throat> Speaking of school holiday boredom. I used to be bored after the first week of the summer holidays. Yeah, me too. Oh. No, uh, when I got to young Jason's place, his, his mother had okayed it. He and some of his mates were in the middle of a booze-up. A booze-up? Lager cans strewn all over the place, things broken. Well, it doesn't sound like Jason. How often have I heard that? But boozing in the middle of the day. Sandra would be appalled. How old is he? What, 13, 14? Time on the hands. I'll bet she's no idea. What are you looking at me like that for? Well, I think you should tell her. Oh, come on, love. Not down that road again. I thought you'd thrown your social worker's hat away. But boozing in the middle of the day. I'm mean, a schoolboy. Wouldn't you want to know if you were his father? Which he hasn't got, by the way. Well, not living in, anyway. So, how are things with you, then? Hey, all the usual. Struggling against overwhelming odds to try and earn a living. Oh, you know, I wouldn't mind your debts. Cripple you, darling. They cripple you. Well, I'm sorry to disturb your siesta. Have you seen the time? Oh, I was just going anyway, Mr. Baldwin, on this. Cheers. That was a treat to see, that was, Mike. Oh, Tom. What's that, Jack? You cracking the whip. Only way to deal with Harvey here, I find. Do you like the new window, Mrs. Dunworth? Uh, very nice, Percy, yeah. Very nice. I can't say I'm entirely satisfied with the mastic work, Mrs. Bishop. Well, I am, Mr. Sugden. And please, no more criticisms of the workmen. Or I have an idea, they'll abandon us mid-window. No doubt if your ability to make soup under shell fire would be any help at all. But I'm only acting quality control, Mrs. Bishop. That's all. Quality control. Even when even when you're over, it then takes another couple of days yeah. to get back to. Oh, excuse uh, me, boss. One. Yes, Mr. Barlow. What can I get you? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, no, no, no. I uh, I don't want a drink. Actually, uh, it's about your son. Oh, don't tell me you couldn't prize the lazy beggar out of bed. I'll give him a thicky. Yeah. Uh, oh no, no, no. He was uh, up and about. Okay. No, it's just that. Um, <coughs> well, uh, I don't quite know how to put this without seeming as if I'm a snooper. Well, I think you'd better put it then and see if I think you're a snooper. Well, when I got to your flat, uh, Jason had some mates on it. We never said his mates were coming around. And, uh, well, to get to the point, they were behaving pretty boisterously. Frightened, you mean, in the uh, flat? Yeah. Well, no, more mucking about. Oh, well, it's probably just a bit of high spirits. I mean, you know what lads are like. No, it wasn't just that. Oh. They've been drinking. Drinking? Oh, yeah. Lager. Oh, I've got no lager. They had several cans. They must have bought it somewhere. Anyway, uh, I thought I'd better tell you now for Jason's sake. And, uh, well, I hope you don't think I'm a snooper. <laughs> Jack, yeah. I'm going home. What the hell's the matter with her all of a sudden? Hey. Oh, Barlow has that effect on people. <laughs> hey, listen. Oi, you, I thought you were going back to work. Oh, I am, Mr. Baldwin, honest. We're going to have it done, I've decided. What? We're going to have the house done, cladded, you know, like it showed in this brochure. Do you bar me? No, look, it'll make a big improvement. Like giving it a facelift. We'll be the envy of the street, you know. Plus, it'll put a lot of value on the house. <laughs> See you, Mr. Baldwin. You've got a funny colour too, Jack. Even worse than Sandra. <laughs> Mrs. Stubbs? Yeah. WPC Morgan. What are you doing here? Actually, making inquiries. What about? Well, for a start, about what's been going on in this flat. What your son and his mates have been up to. Nothing. He's not been up to anything, have you, Jason? Did you know he drinks, Mrs. Stubbs? And is he usually left to his own devices all day? Hi, soldier. Hi, Dad. <laughs> mm. What you been doing today? Not much. Well, you not been playing footy? Yeah, but Daniel Kelly took his ball home. Why? Wanted to be Manchester City, but how could he? He doesn't support it. Off no way. <laughs> Have you seen Sarah Louise's bunny? Uh, yeah, it's tied up in my bedroom. Well, go and untie it and give it to her. 
You know she can't go to sleep without it. She's sappy. What about you and your teddy? I've not had time to make any tea yet. Well, that's no push. Uh, you disappeared in a puff of smoke this morning. Yes, well, it was embarrassing, wasn't it? Girl, I've been thinking. Oh? Yeah, maybe I have been uh, overdoing the socialising a bit lately. I think it went in my head a little bit. You know, a married man slipping the chain can get to be a bit of a habit. So anyway, I thought that we should, um... Brian. Yeah? Before you say anything else, there was something else I told your mum last night. I told her what the real trouble was. Not you going out on your own. Well, go on, what? I told her I don't love you. I've been doing a lot of thinking today, too. It's too messy, living the way we do. We can't live in isolation. There are other people involved. Like your mum. My mum. And the kids. So what are you saying? I want a divorce. Mum, I can't untie the bunny. I'm sorry. Then why did you tie it up in the first place? And where did you get the string? What have I told you about playing with string? Hey? Where did you find it? <laughs> right, sunshine, skates on. What? I'm gonna be late for school. I've not got school, it's holidays. I've not got school, stupid. Oh yeah, I uh, forgot, I'm sorry. I'm gonna call your daddy stupid. Well, he is. I forgot, all right. Now be quiet unless you want your backside tanning. I am, please. Come on, hand some face wash before you go out. I want that marmalade off from round your mouth. Don't take it out on him. I've not slept since Monday. What do you expect? Brian, I know you're upset. So am I. But we've got to try and act normal for their sakes. Oh, yeah, normal. Do you hear that, kiddo? We're a real normal family, aren't we? Your mummy and daddy are getting divorced for the second time. That's horrible, Brian. Don't talk like that to her. She doesn't understand. But you're right, girl. It is horrible. It's flaming disgusting. You're breaking up a family twice when there's no real reason. Sarah pulled the doll's arm off again. Daddy will fix it. Yeah, Daddy will fix it. Dad, Jeremy Cooper broke our fish tank at school and I told the teacher you are brilliant at mending stuff. Did you, son? Nicky, how would you like to go to the garage with your Daddy today? Can I, Dad? Can I? Yeah, yeah, of course you can. I'll pick him up at lunchtime on my way home. I'm off this afternoon. I might take him into town. He needs some new shoes. Oh, fine. Uh, would you like some money? No, thanks. I'm okay. Yeah, of course you are. There's no sign of him. What did you expect? Eight o'clock sharp. That's what they said. I just wanted to meet you, you know, before I went to work. Hey, we don't need you as formers. We'll get on the lock without you stopping. Oh. Now, you're coming in, you're going out. It's like a flaming bitch. All right! Come on, eh? Switch that thing off, it's time over, go. I'll go in a few minutes, I want to watch this. You'll come with me now! I'm not leaving you in this flat on your own. I'm not a flipping kid, you know. That's exactly what you are. Oh. Oh, God, Jason, I thought I could trust you. Oh, Mum, I told you, it won't happen again. No, it damn well won't. I mean, lads getting drunk, smashing the place up, police fetched in. What were you playing at, Jason? What the hell did you think you were doing? Oh, don't start again. Never mind, don't start again. Get your hand right on, I'm taking you around to Mrs Carter's. Look, I said I'm sorry. You'll be more than sorry if the authorities cart you off to a home because I'm not taking care of you proper. Now shift. Let's have a look, Trace. Ooh, it's from Colin Pearson. Don't be daft. It is. I can tell he's writing. Who's Colin Pearson, anyway? He's a prat. Little and fat. A little fat prat. And it's not from him. From Roger Clough, so there. Did you send him one? I'm not telling. I did. Put with all my love and kisses from Donna. 
That's stupid. You're not supposed to put who it's from. Ooh, it cost me 40p. I'm not spending 40p on a card so he won't know it's from. It, there is a certain logic to that, Donna. I, uh... Whoops. Hi. Hi, Dad. You know Donna? Yes, I do. Hello, Donna. I just popped in on the off chance some lunch. Didn't realise it was a hen party. Oh, well, I dare say we can spare him the odd crumb, can't yeah. we, girls? Have we got time to go up and listen to a new brass LP? Who, not brass? Yes, ten minutes. Oh, ye gods. Twelve years old and sending Valentine's cards. Do you know, when I was twelve, I think my biggest crush was on Rupert Bear. Kinky kid. <laughs> no, but they grow up so quickly nowadays. I mean, look at young Jason Stubbs. How old is he? 13, 14, and already a mini lager lout. Uh, I don't think that's quite fair, love. It's just boys' bravado. We all did it. Uh, what? You broke the rules? Never. I bet you were always a perfect little angel, you. Clean knees, socks up, school cap on the lot. I'll have you now. I've pinched my dad's fags more than once, not to mention the odd nip from his hip flask he used to take to matches. I, uh, I think this is a bit more than that, though, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I suspect that Jason has been led astray by the other lads. Peer pressure. You know, if they're all doing it, he's not going to show his chicken. <sighs> yeah, but it goes from drinking to glue sniffing to God knows what. Oh, who would be a parent nowadays? Nikki, don't ride your bike there. I've got bulbs coming up. Poor kid. His little world's about to fall apart and I'm nagging him over a few lousy tulips. Having second thoughts? No. Glad the whole lousy business is out in the open. But it doesn't stop me realising what I'm doing to Nikki. For the second time. What about Sarah Louise? She's too young to understand, thank goodness. The main thing is to try and stay friends, for their sakes. I don't think that's possible with Brian. You'll never forgive me. Is that what he said? Well, he's not said much at all, really. It's mainly been hurt silences. He still doesn't understand why I want a divorce in the first place. Oh, we can't have thought everything in the garden was lovely. Not the way you've been living these last few months. You'd have put up with it. A lot of men do. Mm. They're out at work all day. Go to the pub with their mates. Squash goes out with other women. Only because I'm not interested. According to Brian, if I hadn't rejected him, he'd have never looked at another woman. And the sad thing is, I think that's true. Give him time and come to terms with it. Losing me, yeah. It's losing the kids that's tearing him apart. Especially Nicky. He's not losing Nicky. You're not stop him having access. Access? It sounds so formal. Court orders, rules. It's not the relationship a little boy should have with his daddy. Well, girl, you can't have it both ways. Oh, God, why did I ever go back with him? We'd have built new lives by now. The kids would have got used to it. Why the hell didn't I stick to me guns two years ago? About time and all, you should have been here at eight o'clock this morning. The best laid plans of mice and stone cladding men gang up to glue. Oh, is that, is that right, eh? Well, my scheme of a, a job well done might just end up one of them in a glang of glaze. Yes, I might just cancel. Fair enough, missus, if that's where you want it. Put that back, Harriet. Ladies, change the wine. Hey, hang on a minute. I never said that, cheeky. I just said I might. No, Lou. Do you want us to start, or don't you? We've got other work to do. Oh, all right, then, seeing as you're here. Hey, and I want the job done proper and all. None of this cowboy rubbish. Er, uh, roofing job, is it? Somewhat in that region, Grandpa. Window frames? You're warm. Dry rock. Try Death Watch Beetle. Never. 
Oh, you remember to pack the cyanide then, Eric. Have you got Death Watch, Beetle? I don't know, Percy. Hang on, I'll just unscrew my wooden leg and have a shifty for you. Or dry rot. There could be a slander case brewing here. I need a witness. In your roof. I mean, it could spread, could that? Infect the whole street. What are you on about? There's workmen putting scaffolding up outside your house. Oh, God, they've not come, have they? I was hoping they might have got lost. It's that stunt cladding in our pier I was on about. Oh, that's it, is it? Hey, where, where are you going, love? Um, I thought you was giving us hand behind the bar. No, I've got to go and get Jason. The lady I left him was out this afternoon. Oh, but we're sure, Andy. The, the, the lad will be all right. Don't fret. I can't chance it, Jack. I've had to tell Alec the same, much as I need the money. And it's all that flaming big mouth's fault. Hey, now hang on a minute, lovey. You had to go shoving your oar in, didn't you, Mr. Flaming Do-Gooder? It's all right for you and your snooty wife sat there in your comfy little lives, telling everybody else how to run theirs. Well, some of us don't find it so easy to do everything by the book. And not because we're too thick or idle or we don't care, but because we drew the short straw. So you just remember that the next time you go tittle-tattling to the police and getting us in even more flaming bother. Now, get out. Look, if you think it's none of my business, you tell me to butt out, but... Do you want to talk? She wants a divorce. Oh, flippin' eh, Brian? Yeah, she told me a couple of days ago. Does Ivy know that? Oh, I knew there were problems, but divorce? Why? <laughs> because I'm the best husband in the world. Uh, because she loves me madly, because we're blissfully happily married. I mean, why the blazes do you think? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Is there... Is there somebody else like... No, not this time. Well, not as far as I know. No girl keeps things close to her chest these days. No, it's not that. Well, when you got married again, I thought... Well, we all thought... Yeah, we all did. Happily ever after. Fooled everybody, didn't we, including me? Well, you must have some idea why. Well, she's fed up with me, isn't she? Or perhaps she fancies a change. <laughs> You know, my mum always said, like mother, like daughter. Well, she wasn't talking rubbish. Hey, what about the kids? Oh, well, they'll stop with her, won't they? Why should they? Why the heck should they? Eh? I mean, fathers have rights as well, don't they? I'm not the one that's breaking up the happy home. Why should I give up my son, eh? Tell me that. Look, I don't know, mate. I mean, uh, it doesn't seem fair to me, but you'll still be able to see him. I mean, Gil won't be unreasonable, mate. I don't you? want to see him. I want him in my life. I'm gonna get him jam on me paper and I'm gonna mend his broken cars. Pestering me to help him with his homework. Come to the football games with me. I don't wanna be a visiting father, damn it. I want me son. So tell her that. Won't make any difference. She does what she likes, she always has done. Afternoon, Emily. Afternoon. Looking good, isn't it? Do you fancy having yours done next? Uh, no, thank you. Oh, it's a sound investment, madam. Increase the value of your house, bung a couple of hundred on the price. Uh, no, thank you. Got no taste, some people. You're right, you're right, you're right. You going out again, then? Well, there's not much point in staying in, is there? It's up to you. I don't have to go out. I don't mind. Gail, let's get Pauline round. You and me go out. Let's get away from here and talk things over. There's nothing to talk about. Nothing? There's our marriage. It's over, Brian. We've tried. It hasn't worked. I've tried. All you've done is moan. Let's not get into any more rows. There's no point. Just tell me one thing. Why did you marry me again? Because you wanted it. Because I did. That's the only reason. And you, ma'am. And my ma'am. Everyone putting the pressure on. Everybody wanted it but you. I was never happy about it. 
I knew on the day it would work. When we stood on the register off his steps and you gave me that eternity ring, if I could have turned and run a million miles away, I would. See? So it was all a lie? Not a lie. I did care about you. But you didn't love me? Not in the way I used to. No. Was it him? That stinking lousy Aussie? It had nothing to do with him. It was to do with me. Marrying too young. Growing up afterwards. Realising there was never enough between us to spend the rest of our lives together. It's too good for me, right, eh? Eh? <sighs> too smart for me. Too ambitious. All that rubbish about you wanting to start your own Why business. Why was it rubbish? What was wrong with me having my own identity? You couldn't cope with that, could you? You're like summer out of the dark ages. A woman should know her place. She's all right in the bedroom, in the kitchen, and that's it. Oh, don't give me all that permit. It's crap. There are no complicated reasons, Brian. It's very simple. Not to me! We're not right for each other. I doubt we ever were. OK, then. You went out, Gail. You go. Be safe. This is my house and my kids. I'm not the one that's complaining. You and out, you go! It doesn't make any kind of sense, Brian. The kids need security. This is their home. They'll stay in their home. With me. You're not serious. Try me. Court had never agreed to it. Oh, it's flaming marvellous, isn't it? Your wife decides to boot you her, Red, so she gets the lot. She gets the kids, the house, the flaming lot. You're not having my son! It's our son! He loves us both! I'm his mother! Oh, some flaming mother. You tell the little lad apart, not once, but twice in his young life. How's he going to feel when he knows his dad's been booted out again? What sort of effect is that going to have on him? Have you thought about that? Of course I have. What do you take me for? A hard, selfish, rotten little bitch, Gail. That's what I take you for. Wish to God I'd never lay my eyes on you. Hello. Come in. Is your husband in? Yes, he is. Come on, Ben. Ken, Sandra to see you. Before you say anything, I'm sorry about what happened at dinner. I just blew. Ken didn't send for the police, you know. No, I know. Well, it seems his delightful mates got Nick for vandalising a car after they left him, and, well, one of them told the coppers they'd already done over our place, and... That's why they came round. I'm sorry. I had no right to open my trap on you the way I did. Oh, that's all right. It doesn't matter. I'm just glad he didn't get involved with the rest of it. Well, no, not this time he didn't, no. Mom, please. What's going on, Mom? Um, nothing, love. Listen, why don't you and Donna let Jason listen to your new tape? Go on, Jason. Go with the girls. There's a good lad. Cup of tea. I'll put the kettle on. Go on, sit down a minute, love. Things getting a bit on top of you, are they? When I left Ronnie, I thought I'd finally have some peace and quiet in my life. Now, it seems I've jumped out the frying pan into the flipping fire. The authorities will be on me back if I do a full-time job. How am I going to make ends meet? I can't leave him to his own devices. He's not a little boy anymore. He needs a firm hand. He needs a father. Excuse me, Mrs. Bishop. Hey, I'll get you that one. Ah, all right. oh. How long's all this scaffolding going to be there, then? Well, till they finish the job, there's the love. But it's a blooming hazard. What if some dubbing old person wants to walk on that pavement? What then? Well, you'll have to just watch where you're going, won't you, cock? <laughs> I'm more concerned about what it'll look like when it's finished. It's already standing out like a sore thumb. Well, Prince Charles certainly wouldn't like it. 
what's it got to do with Prince Charles? Well, he hates architectural monstrosities. You know what he'd call it? He'd call it a carbuncle. Well, I'd like to hear him say that to Vera. You know, Mrs. Duckworth, uh, one feels your heist is something of a monstrous carbuncle. Yeah, I see what you mean. She'd probably end up in the bloody tower. Prince Charles doesn't have to live next to it. We do. He's entitled to his opinion. Anyway, he's right. I am hard and selfish. Oh, rubbish. I didn't used to be. Not years ago, when I piled around with Susie Birchill. She was the tough one. The one who knew where she was going. It was the meek and mild one who tagged along. All I wanted was a home, a husband, and kids. I knew what I didn't want. I didn't want to end up like me ma'am, dragging up a family on her own. And now look at me. You're not Audrey. You're stronger than she is, for starters. You're doing this from choice. What choice? You could still have Brian if you wanted him. But you don't. So, you're choosing to go it alone. Millions of people would rather than stop in unhappy marriages, but they don't have the guts. Or the stupidity. Do you really believe what you're doing is stupid, Gail? No. No, I don't. It's bloody terrifying. It's not stupid. Then maybe one day Brian will realise you've done both of you a favour. I doubt that, Pauline. I wish I didn't have to hurt him. Poor love. He marries a meek and mild little thing. She turns out to be a raving monster. That's a monster. Doesn't deserve this, Paul. It'd be so bad if I didn't still care for him. If I do, I always will. There you are. Well, listen, why don't you wait here and I'll go and find a taxi. So it's back to your place, is it? Yours. Hope your mum and dad aren't up. Don't be long. Don't waste your time with that Wally, darling. Oh, belt up. Let me show you what a real man can do. Look, though. just bug off, will you? <laughs> I love it when the play had to get. Sunshine, the birds changed their mind. I'm just the edge. Uh, hey!
We're at the house now. Over. I'd better be going. Get shot. I'm telling you already. Gail? There's a police car out here. The police. They're coming to the house. Mrs. Tilsley? Yes? Is your husband's name Brian? Yes, it is. What's all this about? Do you mind if we're coming for a minute? Yeah? I mean, no. Um, come in. Well, what's happened? Brian's not in any sort of trouble, is he? I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you, Mrs. Tilsley. I think you might be best sitting down. I don't want to sit down. I want to know what the matter is and why you're here. There was an incident outside a disco in the town centre. Your husband was involved. Is he hurt? He was stabbed. The ambulance took him to hospital. They were unable to help him, I'm afraid. He died on the way. Oh, no. No. Find the kettle and make a pot of tea. Fine. Come on, it's through there. He can't be dead. He can't be. I'm sorry, love. Are you sure it's Brian? Yes. There's no doubt about it. Pauline? Yes, girl? Will you ring for me, ma'am, please? Yeah. If she lives local, it'll be a good idea if she comes round. Right. What am I going to tell the kids? What am I going to say to Nicky? Women, women drivers. They should never be allowed behind a wheel. Is that you, Alec? Of course it's me. Time, is it? Oh, ten to one-ish. I didn't wake you up, did I? No, love, I'll wait. Do you want a nightcap? Because I certainly do. No, I'm all right. What a night I've had down at Blanco's. <laughs> Harry Dawson again. Oh. Well, he's given his chips a thorough drenching, he has. The times I've stood by that bloke. Well, I mean, granted, he can sing when he's sober, but this is it now. Finito. Drunk, were he? Drunk. He only fell off the stage oh, in the middle of Leslie's house. It was disgusting. Ronnie Sprague says he'll never book him again. Well, you can't blame him. He also says the same goes for the rest of my acts. I tell you, I had to pour the best part of a bottle of scotch down him, at their prices, before he pulled himself together. Come on to bed, love. Come to bed? Come on. I'm lucky to be stood here alive to tell the tale. Coming across the road just now, Audrey Roberts practically runs me over in that flaming car of theirs. Tearing up the road like a bat out of hell, she was. Well, where had she been till this time? No, not coming home, going out. At this time and hour, what the hell's she doing? Leaving Alf by the look of it, he was to that doorstep in his pyjamas. Not a pretty sight. Oh, all this news joking. Come on. It's children, I gather. Yes, um, a little boy and a toddler. Well, do you think you could hang on here for a bit longer, keep an eye on them? Well, yes, I suppose so. Um, but I'll have to phone my husband first. He'll be wondering what's happened to me. She has to go to the hospital, you see. Someone has to identify him. And it'll be better if her mother goes with her. So if you could hang on here. Oh, I see. Yes, well, I'll just ring home. Feel up to coming with me to the hospital, love. What for? You have to identify him, you see. Oh, not now, surely. I mean, but can't that way? Can't someone else do that? It's all right. I'm all right. If you want my advice, you'll get it over with. Well, I'm coming with you, love. Good idea. You go and get your coat on, love, and we'll run you and your mother over there. Your friend's going to stop and mind the kids. That's all right. That's all in hand. No, I'll just do it all that. All right, all right. Can I come in? Yeah, what 
nothing else to do. I'm sorry, Don. Do you know what time it is? Yeah, I do. Listen, I don't know how to tell you this. I got some terrible news about Brian. Dan, who is it? Uh, Brian. What about him? He's dead. Who is it? Oh. Hello, Alf. What's up? I'll tell her. Tell me what? Uh, I've a lovely summer at, uh, Come and sit down, love. Oh, what's going on? What's happening? I've brought us some very bad news, love. Oh, dear. Oh, is it one of the little kiddies? Is Sarah Louise Paula? No, it, it's all the kids. Oh, Brian. Something's happened to him? Yes. Now, you're going to have to be very strong, love. He's dead. No. No. Hey, I'm sorry. Gail rang Audrey and she said I better come and tell you. I don't, I don't know what happened. It was some of a fight in town. Blood. Somebody stabbed him. No. No, no, Brian. No, no, my little man. You drink this. Do you want one, Don? No. I think I will. They must have said what happened, love. Did they not tell you when they came round? They just said there'd been a fight. Somebody attacked him, I think. I don't really know, Mrs. Brennan. She'll never get over this, you know, never. The sun rose and set on that lad. What am I going to say to her? I'm going to help her. Oh, I don't know. I don't understand these things. There's, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Who lives, who dies. If there's a plan, well, I can't see it. There's a police cat outside. Gail's here, love. I want it doing, you know. I reckon every house in the street will be after having it done. Oh, I hope not. No, if they all have it done, well, won't stand out, will it? Hey, and them workmen, keep them at it, grab the wind. Because their time's our money, you know. Who well, the hell you talk about Baldwin? On the quiet, you're a right little capitalist, you are. It's awful. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to be the one to have to tell you. Oh, I've, uh, I've got the keys for the garage. 
Gail said he'd help man trying to keep things going, man. Of course I will. If I can. Still can't believe it. Oh, I know, I know. Anyway, I better tell Jack and all Vera. Hey! Does that look straight to you? I mean, look, when you when you cover one eye, it looks, looks to go down at one Vera. side. Vera. Oh, are you? Hey, does that look straight to you, uh, Vera? Listen, listen, Ivy will not be coming into work today, so can you tell Baldwin? Why? What's up? Has something happened? Come on, Sarah, eat it up. Come on, if you eat this, I'll give you a biscuit afterwards, all right? Do you know you look awful, lover? Why don't you go back to bed? I can cope with the kiddies. Oh, sleep if I do go back to bed. Do you know, I'm going to ring the doctor again to give you something to help you sleep. I need some tranquilizers or something. I'm not stopping on tranquilizers. Tranquilizers won't make things any different yes, to what they are. I know, lovey, but they'll help you. They'll just help you cope. I can cope. I can't. I'm not starting on a load of pills. Yeah! <laughs> Yeah! Okay, now come on, love. Come on, love. Come on. Has my dad gone to the garage? <laughs> Mum, if I'm not going to school, can I go to the Look, garage? Look, Nikki, why don't you come with me? Give us a bit. Get up. Come on. Come Well, of course it's sad. I'm not disagreeing with you. But life's got to go on, hasn't it? Oh, except Brian's life. I mean, that's it. Finished. Where's the meaning in that? You tell me. Eh, it's no good asking me, is it? The way I figure it, your number's on a ticket. Sooner or later, somebody shouts your number and that's it. Till then, you just get on with it. What about them children? I mean, what's it going to do for them? I know what it's like bringing one up without his father and it's not easy. Gail's got two. Yeah, hey, Gail will manage. She'll have to and so she will. Like me. I'm going to ring Wally Simpson. What for? You know damn well what for. See if I can salvage something from the wreck. Look, if we're going to discuss my financial problems, can we do it in here and not out there with Sandra drinking it all in, passing all our private affairs on to all and sundry? Oh, give over, Alec. Sandra's got her own worries. She's not bothered about yours. No, neither are you either. Well, you should be. If I can get on that Middle East tour Wally Simpson wanted me on. Oh, Alec, there must be other ways of making money. Such as? Wally, you old rascal, <laughs> it's your friend of mine here, Alec Gilroy, <laughs> saying, this is your lucky day. <laughs> oh, he's not in the office yet, uh, has he? Yes, well, uh, when he comes in, will you ask him to ring me, please? Thank you. Alec Gilroy. Well, at least Brian Tilsley doesn't have to worry how he's going to pay his tax bill. I couldn't think about it, 32, it's a bit old, isn't it, to start this going? Well, I dare say anything over 15 seems old to you, Sonny. Sonny? Behave yourself, will Martin, you? Martin. What? Take an early lunch, eh? Mm -hmm. We've got to be at Park Road at half one to fit them window locks. I'll get back here by quarter past, yeah? Oh. He's telling Dawn about Brian Silver. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it only goes to show you, doesn't it? If there's anything you want in this life, grab it while it's going. There's no use hanging about. You don't know how long you got, do you? Mm. Okay, I'll see you later, eh? Yeah. Ta-da. Mm -hmm. Morning. Morning. Just give us a shout if you need any help, eh? Are you doing anything tonight, Dawn? Because if you're not, would you like to come out with me for a meal somewhere? I thought you were a married man, Mr. Bradley. No, no, I'm not a married man. I'm a single man. Mrs. Fairclough is my landlady, that's all. I thought she was more than that. No, no. Well, we were close once, yeah, but not anymore. We are both free agents. Oh, yes? Well, in that case, what are you whispering for? I mean, Gail won't really know what's hit her just yet. It'll be a week or two before it really sinks in. Oh, she's gonna have a struggle on, won't she? With them two kiddies. Well, do you know, Alf? I think they'll be a help to her. I do, really. Oh, she's gonna need all the help she can get. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I'll say one thing for folk around here. They're not bad when things happen. I mean, mm. there's, there's old Phyllis looking after the cafe, and Kevin's looking after the garage. Oh, well, good for Kevin. You know, when you came round and told us this morning, you were ever so upset, because well, him and Brian, they were very close. Mm, I suppose he's wondering what's going to happen now. How do you mean? Well, I mean, Gail's bound to get rid of the garage, isn't she? I mean, I've not asked her yet. She's got enough of her plate, but I can't see her on it. She's bound to get shut, I should think. Oh, Kevin's a good mechanic, though, isn't he, love? And a good mechanic can always get a job anywhere, love.
Once we have this row blasting out non-stop. What's that, Squire? The row! You can't hear yourself speak! You'll have to speak up, mate. If you'll just turn that wireless off for a minute. Thank you. It's a public nuisance, that wireless set. Percy! Percy! Would, would you pack it in? You're stopping these lads from working. I'm doing no such thing. I'm complaining about the, the noise. That's all, and you as their employee are liable by law. The sooner they get finished, the sooner the row will stop, Percy. How anyone can work at all with all that rubbish dinning in their ears. It's scientific, mate. Helps you get on. Music while you work. Music? That's not music. It's a cacophony. Who says? I do. Percy, Percy, will you stop upsetting my lads? Apart from that, they ought to have a bit more respect. There's been a bereavement in this street today. Aye, and there'll be another one, mate, if you don't push off. Rover's return. Who shall I say? Oh, it's Wally, is it? Is it? Is it Wally Simpson? Yes, he sounds half kettle to me. Uh, Wally, how's the boy? How's that nasty cough? Any better yet? Eh? Well, I do worry about you. I mean, you've got one or two friends left, you know. Crawler. Uh, hang on a minute, Wally. I think we're getting busy in the bar. Uh, no, no, it's all, it's all right, Wally. It's only the wife. Now, about that Middle East tour you wanted me to handle for you. Eh? I, I did. I never did. I never told you what you could do with it. Now, Wally. <laughs> Wally! Yes, well, I mean, if I did say that, it was only from a negotiating stance, that's all. Yeah, that's it. Please, Bess, sir. Right, lovey. So sure, I'll get that. Put another scotch in there, will you? I hear you kept the garage going today, lovey. Well, I've tried. I've got much work done now. Phone's not stopped ringing. People asking, is it right about Brian? I suppose it's understandable. People want to sympathise. Almost, yeah. Even had one bloke phone up and asked, is the garage for sale? Oh, they're a load of vultures, aren't they? And is it for sale? Well, I don't know. They only do the work. This uh, club or disco that Brian was in, uh, rough sort of place, is it? I don't know. Never been myself. They're all rough nowadays compared to what they were. I'll tell you what's causing it, shall I? It's this so-called music. What music do you mean, Mr. Subbin? This, uh, what did he call it? Boogie woogie. This acid drop stuff you read about. The Gwindy's disco is like one in a boiler work. The noise drives are mad. The brains are scrambled, you see. Get our point there, first. Of course I have. It stands to reason, doesn't it? It's the music. We didn't come dashing out of George Formby concerts, fighting and stabbing each other. Go on, tell me I'm wrong. You can't, can you? Half is it, first. <sighs> oh, come on. Come and have a drink. They sleep. Sarah Louise is. Nicky isn't. Still asking where his daddy is. Oh. What can you say? I mean, they don't understand at that age. I think tomorrow I'll try and tell him. Okay. I can tell him his daddy won't be coming home anymore. And I'm going to take him to school. No, do you think you should? I mean, well, do you think you're doing the right thing? I know I've got to live with it. And so has Nicky. I'm putting it off, not going to make it any easier, I know. <sighs> it's just that I think perhaps, well, you should wait till after the funeral. Oh, that's another thing now. You're not to worry about anything to do with the funeral, because Alf will see to all that. Yes. Well, he knows what I want. Yeah. Quiet. The less fuss, the better. Yeah. It's just, I think Ivy will be expecting that big Catholic thing, you know. Well, it's not up to Ivy. I know. It's up to me. He was my husband and I just want it over with. So whatever we do now, it won't bring him back. I've prayed so much today. Yeah, well, that must help. Um, no, it's been no help. That's what I can't understand, you see. I, I ask for understanding. A cup of tea for you, love. Yeah. Uh, why don't you put a brandy in there? That, that'd help you. I don't want nothing. She hasn't had anything all day. 
He'd got all his life in front of him, hadn't he? Should have been me, not him. I wish it had have been me. Oh, no, love. I keep thinking about when you were a little baby, you were only six months old, and... Oh, we were poorly. I sat up with him night after night because I thought I was going to lose him. But he come through. Why, Vera, why? I don't know, love. That's God's honest truth. I, I thought losing Bert were bad. Oh. I didn't know what pain was till now. Oh. I want him burying me, Bert, love. Will you see to it, Dan? You speak to the chap for me. Yeah, well, I think... Uh... I think Gail asked, asked Alf to make our funeral arrangements, love. No, no, I want it done proper. No, love, he, he must go next to his father and well, we must have a requiem mass. Uh, yeah, well, like I say, love, that, that's all up to Gail, is that? He's my son. I want his funeral done right. Flaming Wally Simpson is a miserable beggar, you know. So you keep telling me. I mean, he used to be practically begging him to let me take that tour out, and all he keeps saying is, mm, I'll have to think about it. Uh, I thought he was a friend of yours, this Wally Simpson. Well, he is. We're very close. But he's a slimy beggar, though. I'll tell you some, Alec. You've got the worst friends of anybody I've ever known. I've got nicer enemies than you've got friends. This, is... this lad that did the stabbing, that's the police got hold of him. Oh, I don't know. If they have, he's not told me about it. Anyway, it's been a long day. I think I'll uh, turn in. See you. Yep. Night, Al. Night, Al. Well, and you go out to work in the morning. You never know if you're going to see each other again at night. Well, you know what they say, Ralph. Live every day as though it's going to be your last. There's so much in that. Morning. Hello, Rob. What's up? I don't know what I'm going to do, but Hey, no, it's that bad. Can I get you a drink? Well, I'll have a lager. No, a gin. Go and sit down. I'll fetch it over. Go on. Usual, Louis. Here's a lager. How's Ivy? Well, how do you think? I'm just thankful she's got done with her. You won't dare leave her on her own. No. Hey, Alan. A drop of mother's ruin, never. Yeah, What's up? How about that social worker on scene again? That Jason. What, that trouble him and his pals when I thought I were all over? Not according to her. No. How long has your son been drinking alcohol? How often has he left on his own? I mean, it's like a flaming inquisition. And now she says she wants to come round the flat tomorrow. Well, if you want some time off no, here, I don't want her to come to the flat again. I get enough stick off my neighbours already. I mean, first the police and then her. No, I, I said I'd go and see her at her office. I dare say it won't be so bad once you get there. You don't know him. I think they want to take him off me, Ben. I do. I think they want to take away my son. How's Gail, Mr. Roberts? Well, how would anybody be after a blow like that? I was thinking about her last night, you know, wondering how she can carry on, cos... Well, I don't know if I could if it happened to Kevin. She's got no alternative, has she? She's got them two kids to look after. Yeah. Uh, Alf. Oh, uh, hi, Mr. Brennan. Yeah, uh, morning, love. Morning. Uh, uh, look, I gather you're in charge of funeral arrangements. Well, I. Well, look, it's not going to be a cremation job, is it? No, no, no. Gail wants a burial. Ah, oh, well, that's some. Uh, going from church, is it? No, from the chapel arrest. The mourners will go straight from the house to the cemetery. Ah, uh, well, that's it, you see. Look, you see, Ivy set her out on having a Catholic burial with a full requiem mass and everything, and, and then having him laid to rest alongside his dad. Right. Well, all I can say is that is not the plan. Yeah, well, it hadn't occurred to anybody, you see. That's why I, I told Ivy I'd put it to you. See what you thought. Well, it's not, not to do with me. It's down to Gail, something like that. Yeah, well, I didn't want to bother her, you know, if I could help it. Uh, Mr. Roberts, have we got any bags of potatoes? Are there none there? No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, just a second. Look, all I can say is you'll have to go around and see Gail. Otherwise, tell Ivy to forget it. Yeah. I suppose it might look better when it's weathered a little. Well, it couldn't look a lot worse. How about you, Mr. Bowen? What do you think about that I saw over there? Who, Vera? Well, I must admit she's no old painting, is she? No, the house. What have I done to it? Oh, the house. Well, all I can say is that Prince Charles never sits eyes on it. See ya. <laughs> Admiring my stone cladding, are you? Well, it's certainly eye-catching. <laughs> Mrs. Duckworth, now I've always believed in calling a spade a spade. And on the same principle, I've always believed in calling a monstrosity a monstrosity. Oh, yeah. And all I can say, I hope you'll be asking for your money back and getting to prize every bit of it off again. Use the courts if necessary. 
You've an open and shut case. Nobody will dispute that. Are you trying to be funny or what? I'm being very serious. The sight of your house would wipe the smile off anybody's face. Well, you cheeky old thing! These things are very much a matter of personal taste. Yeah, well, that's something he ain't got. Besides that, he's half blind to start aren't we? I'm not going to stand here and bandy words. No, you go. Go on, go on, there's a few motorists. See if you can get knocked down. I'll see you later, Mrs Bishop. Yes. But you've got taste, Emily. I mean, well, besides your choice in lodgers, I mean, what do you think? Well, it's a rest thing. I think I shall need a little time to get used to it. Anyway, we, we'd better be going in. Hey, well, I can give you a dress, you know, if you want yours to win. And they've caught the thug that did it, have they? Ah, well, there was no end of witnesses. I mean, what kind of a world are we living in when young fellas go out at night carrying knives? I mean, because he had one on him already, didn't he? So I heard, Betty. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad I'm not young nowadays. I mean, we say often, don't we, that they have it easy, but... Oh, I don't know. I think it's us that have it easy, don't we? Uh, Rover's return. Alec... What do you mean, caught me up? I've been up for a couple of hours. We're not all night owls, you know. Well, yes, of course, I'm still interested, but uh, you gave me the impression that you... Ah, well, that depends. I mean, when you say short notice, I mean, just how short are we talking about? By the way, you know I'm going to see that social worker this afternoon. Yeah. Well, have they been in touch with you, asking about me? No, love. Because I know they've been in touch with Jason Skull, because he said the deputy headmaster had had a word with you. You're beginning to sound paranoid, do you know that? I think I'm entitled. Well, you're not, love. It's easy for you to say. But you should see the looks I'm getting from my neighbours. Like I was some kind of bad smell. I shouldn't be surprised if they're getting up a petition to have me thrown out. Sandra, love, I've been getting looks like that for years. Usually from other fellas' wives. You just ignore them. Hey, would you <coughs> credit it? Go on. Wally Simpson. After all he's up in the nine about whether he wanted me to take that tour out, he now rings and says I'm still interested. Because if I am, the plane's leaving for Tobias. Well, guess when? Just get Yesterday? No, well, it might as well be. Today. Ringway, five o'clock today. And are you going? Well, how can I? I mean, I've got commitments. What commitments? Well, to you and the pub, and to... To you and the pub, I can't just disappear in the black, white, blue yonder and leave you to pick up the pieces, can I? Alec, do you want to go? It's not a question of wanting, is it? It's a question of financial necessity. Except that he's made it so I can't go anyway now with his crazy last-minute decisions. Hang about. Right, team. Yeah. I want your honest opinions, or in your case, Jacko, the first thing that comes into your head. Can we or can we not manage without Alec for the next few weeks? Can I count on you all to rally round? Of course you can. Well, it's better without him than when he's here. There you are. Right, I'll go and sort you some clean vests out. Uh, yeah, but, but just a minute, Beth. I mean, are you sure? Look, I mean, there's all sorts of things I wanted to talk you through. Well, then start talking. Haven't you better ring Wally Simpson and tell him what you've decided? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a few more I'll have to ring as well. Hey, you're wonderful. You know that. There's no time for soppy talk now. Come on, scoot. That's all I can think of. Oh, well, if uh, there's out, I see that you might have forgotten I'll get it any road. Uh, come on, little one, come on. Uh, you need some money? I don't want any money. I've got some money. Oh! Tom! <laughs> Whoops, my little one. I was running if Come I on, could... love, come on. Uh, come oh. through. <laughs> We're just going shopping, Sarah and me. Bye, lovey. Bye. No. Oh. Sit down. Oh, so. I'm nicking up about then. No, he's at school. I thought it best. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, best place for him. I've, uh, I tried explaining to him what's happened, but uh, I don't think it's sunk in yet. I don't think it's sunk in with me properly. No. Well, it... How's Ivy? Oh, you know, uh, she can't settle. She ain't gone to work, of course. She's, uh, well, she's just wandering around the house. Which is why I've come, actually. Uh, you see, she's set her mind on, on Brian having a, a proper requiem mass and being buried alongside his father. And I, I, I know that's not what we've got planned at the moment, but uh, I'm sure you can see Ivy's point of view as his mother. No. Well, I'll think about it, love. You... I'm sorry. No. It's my husband I'm burying. It's not Ivy's son, or Bert's son. It's my husband. 
Okay, love. And I'll bury you, as I see fit. Yeah, understood, right. Surely Ivy can see that. Oh, she will, love. She will when I explain it to her. Right, well, I'll ring you as soon as I get back. Yeah, bye. Right, now I've packed you all the pairs of cotton socks I can find. But I've put you some of that foot powder in because you know your feet start to itch when it's hot. Yes, yes, yes. Listen, love, I've put your flannel in. Do you want some towels? Aye, I better, I better have a couple. I don't know what the standard of accommodation will be like. No. Yeah. Oh, hello, Dickie. It's Alec. Alec Gilroy. I've put your favourite talc in. Uh, yeah, uh, fine, fine, thanks. Uh, yes, I'm just ringing to warn you I'll not be around for a couple of weeks. So, what's happening about this garage? I don't know. Just keeping it going for now. Don't want to go mad and girls just yet, you know? No, but if I was in your shoes, I'd be thinking about making her an offer. Yeah, well, you know if she was in my shoes, I can't afford it. Oh, come on, no one buys anything but her own money these days. You borrow it, don't you? Mm. Oh, pineapple juice, please. Oh, I'll get that, Emily. Oh, thank you. And uh, put another scotch in there oh, and right. whatever this young man wants. Uh, oh, right. Just out, please, Betty. Oh, okay, don't. Oh. Betty. Yeah. Betty, now, you know I'm off to foreign parts. Yeah. Well, the only thing worrying me, I mean, apart from whether I catch this flaming plane or not, is uh, leaving Bet on her own. Now, I know it's a big favour to ask, love, but... No, you'll not be leaving her on her own, love. No? No, not while I'm here. Oh, thanks, Betty. That's what I hoped you'd say. No, I'll give her all the help I can, and I'll stay over whenever she likes. Oh, lovely. Betty, you're an angel. Oh. Uh, and the same goes for me, boss. What? Well, you, you know, if, if you think that Bet feels safer with a man on premises like, you know... Jack, I don't know what better'd feel, but I know I would feel very unsafe indeed thinking of you locked up inside a pub with my wife. No, you just stick to your normal hours and make sure you get home at night inside that miniature Transylvanian castle you've had constructed for yourself. Oh, I mean, charming, isn't it? It's the last time I offer to help anybody, I'm telling you. What's this about your house, Jack? Or is it right the National Trust are going to take it over? Open it up to the public at weekends, eh? I think there's no wrong with it. I quite like it myself. Yeah, only because you're very thumpy if you didn't. Hey, Emily, you've seen it, haven't you? What do you think of it? Oh, please, I I'd rather you didn't ask. Yes, and uh, that goes for me. As well. She doesn't want to incriminate herself. Yeah, well, it was our Vera's idea. I've got no idea with it, really. All right. Well, hello. Pint and the Tonic, Jack, please. Hi. Listen, love, um, <laughs> is it going to upset everything if I don't come in for my tea tonight? No. I don't know what we're having yet, to tell the truth. Well, tell me, there's this fellow I've got to see, and he's got this big office block, and he wants the whole thing alarming. So I felt, you know, it was worth spending a bit of time with him. You spend it, then. I'll expect you when I see you. Good. Yeah. And uh, don't worry about food. I'll, I'll get something while I'm out. Okay, <laughs> Well oh. done, love. Do you want any lunch? No, better not if I'm flying. No, well, I've packed your indigestion tablets, your decongestion spray and your mouthwash, but you're getting very, very low on cod liver oil oh, capsules. Oh, sorry, I have to risk it. Now, I've drawn up a list of things yes, that need I'll be doing. Down in a minute. Right. Just no? Is that all she had to say? Well, there wasn't very much else to say, love. She made up her mind what she wanted, and the last thing I wanted to do was argue. Now, come on, get this down, you look. It's not going to help anybody. You starving yourself. But surely she must realise that he was brought up as a Catholic and he ought to be buried as well. So what's it going to be then? Some clergyman we've never set eyes on and him buried just anywhere? Look, I'm sure it'll all be done properly. Properly? Yes. Well, I'm going to go and see her. I'm going to have her tell me to my face why my only son can't be buried in his religion at the side of his own father. Hey, no, no, Ivy, look, no, you mustn't. Now, girl's his wife. That means she's got certain rights and we've got to respect them rights. Aye. And we've got to respect her feelings and all. His wife? Yes. And what sort of a wife, eh? What sort of a wife that sent him out of the house like that? Look, we don't know you that. You know what he was like with little Nicky. He worshipped him. He worshipped his son. So why were they talking about separations and him being out on his own like that if it wasn't that she'd driven him to it? We don't know that, do we? And perhaps it's best we never will. I know, all right. I know she drove him out of that house. And now she's trying to bury him. Well, she might well, yes. Because I'll tell you this, to all intents and purposes, it was her that killed him. And it's just you and Jason now, then, is it? So what happened to Mr. Stubbs? Oh, we're separated. Uh, he's at sea somewhere. We don't have any contact. Because you were visited by a social worker before, weren't you? November 86, actually. When it was feared that Jason might be at risk from his father. Well, like I said, he's gone now. Mm. But the problem now seems to be not only is he gone, but you don't seem to be there very much yourself. Well, I have to work. We all do. I, I mean, 
He's all right, generally. It were only the one incident, that were all. But it isn't the first time you've left him on his own in the evening. Not first, no. In fact, it's been quite a regular thing. Well, only... Let's see. I'm cleaning this pub, and they've been asking me to help out behind the bar as well. So Jason's been all on his own, in the flat, till gone 11 at night. It's against the law, Mrs. Stubbs. Simple as that. It's against the law. I'm sorry. Now, I can appreciate your problem. Obviously, you've got to work. But my prime concern has got to be for Jason's welfare and his safety. And you're still working at this pub, are you? Well, yeah. So nothing's changed? I suppose not. Well, something's going to have to. Now then, love, I could come with you to the airport if you like. No, 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 love, I think you'd only be hanging around and then having to come back on your own. Well, bye, Betty. Oh, Jack, bye. Bye. Bring us a stick of rock back, love. Yeah, I'll probably bring it more back than that. <laughs> hey, and don't you worry about this place, because we'll make sure it's all kept ship -shape. You're trying to stop it going, aren't you? Alec, come on, love, we've <laughs> not got much time. No, right, right. Ta-ra, then. Have a good journey. All the best. Don't rush back. Try to get to like it. Stop a couple of years or so. Hey, don't you let Beck hear you talking like that. Oh, come on, Bessie, if the truth were known, she can't wait to see the back of him. Give a chance to spread her wings, won't it? Oh, you are an old cynic. I mean, how would you feel if it was your wife going? Oh, no, no, I'd have thing to ask that. What if our Vera were going to the Middle East for a couple of months there? Wonderful, Betty. Well, I've always said she'd look better when her face covered up. Oh. <laughs> How's he gone then, lovey? Oh, never mind, Doug. You'll soon be looking forward to him coming back. Oh, oh hey, she's upset. So am I, Betty. <laughs> no sugar? No, thanks. I'm sweet enough. Ah, thanks, love. Ah. Martin, oh. while you're waiting for that to cool, take the car down to the power wash and give it a quick blast, will you? Can I have you see through that windscreen? Okay. Just let us finish this first. No, no. Do it first. All right. You're the boss. Not a very good one. But hey. you'll find some change in the glove compartment. Good. He's nice, isn't he, Martin? Yeah. It'd be a whole lot nicer if he learned to control that mouth of his. Oh, I think that's just show. I think he's quite shy, really. I think we all are, really, aren't we? Listen, are you uh, still happy with this job? Yes. Good, because I'm happy with the way you're doing it. But um, I think you'll agree that you're not exactly rushed off your feet, are you? Not exactly, no. No. Well, I was thinking that perhaps I ought to give you a bit more responsibility, you know, on the bookkeeping side. Making out invoices, looking after the uh, advertising, stuff like that. Yeah, fine. I'd be glad of a bit more to do. Uh, the only trouble is... Um, what? Well, we need to have quite a long session, you know, for me to talk you through it and uh, explain the ropes. And most days I'm in and out and you've got customers. Yeah. What about lunch times? I tell you what. I mean, it's entirely up to you. You can say no if you want to. But what are you doing tonight? What's your pleasure this evening, Al? Something exotic? We'll have to get me cocktail shaker out. Well, no, but I've got an empty milk bottle. I could hold my hand over at top. <laughs> no, just have a pint, please. Same for Percy. Oh, you're a gentleman, thank you. <coughs> what did I tell you? She's soon got over Milano's departure, aren't she? I feel sorry for you. Why? Well, you understand now, then. It's because she's upset. She's acting like that. Is it? Yeah. Why can't women be more straightforward? You know, that I come with a book of instructions. 118 out. I uh, heard about Brian Tilsey, of course. <laughs> Terrible business. Uh, what sort of state is his wife in, do we know? Well, I've just been on the phone to Audrey and uh, apparently... Uh, well, the girl's staying reasonably calm. It's about all you can expect just now. Well, I had thought of calling and offering me condolences. No, 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 no. She don't want disturbing. Usual, love, is it? Yeah, go on then. Do you know, I've just been stood across the street, you know, looking at our stone cladding. And I don't care what they say, I think it looks distinguished. It does. I mean, they should be thanking us for improving their view. I mean, it's them on the outside that benefit, you know, not us on the inside. True. Yeah. I think they'd be grateful instead of criticising. You won't. Sorry, did you say something, Mr Sugden? I never said a word. I've always liked to keep my thoughts to myself rather than cause offence. Yes, well, I'm the same. Oh, dear me. Hiya, love. 
I'm sorry, Beth. I am sorry, but Beth have no choice. I haven't got a clue what you're on about, love. No, the social worker I went to see all but threatened to take Jason off me, take him into care. No! If, if I didn't do something to change the way we're living. I mean, something drastic. So I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm leaving. I mean, I'm leaving here. Leaving the flat. Well, in the first place, I'm going to take us both to my mother's and I'll see what I can sort out when I get there. Hang on, Sandra. Are you sure? I've got to. I mean, I've got to get away from my rotten neighbours anyway, but I've got to give over working here. Because the social worker didn't like the idea of me working in a pub. Not after Jason had been caught drinking. She seemed to think there was some connection. Which is pretty stupid. Because I know where they got the ale from and it weren't from here. No. But I'll tell you where it were from, though. It were from your shop, weren't it, Mr. Roberts? You what, love? Either you or that daft girl served drink to underage lads, and that's what's led to all this. Well, I don't know about that, love. Yeah, well, I do. I do know. Because it was your shop, because they said it was. So thanks a lot. I mean, really. Thanks a lot for what you've done to me. Hey, hey just a minute. What's all that about? Oh, just part of our staff cutting exercise, Alf. Which, if it goes on much longer, will mean you'll all have to start serving yourselves. She's uh, just settling Sarah down, so uh, if there's out, I can do it well. Uh, not really, no. Hello, Nikki. Hello, Grandma. Uh, look, uh, I'd appreciate it if I could have a word with Gail on her own, if you don't mind. Yes, yes, of course you can. It's just that, uh, well, I have been trying to keep folks from her, you know, as much as possible, so... Well, if it was something that could wait. Uh, no, it can't. Hello, Ivy. Oh, Ivy wants a word, love, so uh, I'll take this young man up to bed. Come on. It's not time. Yes, it is. Come on, let's be having you. Oh, well, do you know, I think I'll have a bath after if there's any hot water left. Yeah, there should be. Right, come on. Oh, I'll say good night, Ivy, just in case you're gone before I come down. Night. Here you are, baby. Well, do you want a cup of tea? I'm going to make one for myself, so you might as well. Well, uh, let me give you a... I'm quite capable. I won't be a minute. So do you want anything else with it? Like a salad or something like that? No, that's fine. Well, that's it then. Thank you. Nice place. Yeah. It's a bit off the beaten track too, so... We're not liable to have Martin walking in. Anyway, let's talk about something else, shall we? I mean, you've been in the shop all day. I'm sure you must want to forget about it. I just thought that's why we'd come here. Let's talk about the job and all extra things yes, like that. Of course we are, yeah. And to get to know each other a bit better. Cheers. Give us an hour's scotch, will you? <coughs> well, well, up. well. What's this thing? Work's out, then, is it? Mike, what are you doing? Me? Oh, just having a drink, watching the world go by. No law against it, is there? You know Dawn, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. How are you, darling? Treating you all right, is he? Very well, thank you. You make sure he does. Now, I know you're going to ask me to join you. Yeah? Normally I'd love to, but uh, I haven't got time at the moment. What a shame. Yeah. See you then. You know, uh... I don't think I should have come here. Why? Because of Mike. Don't worry about him. He's amazing. So I gathered. I know this must be an awful time for you, Gail, but uh, I couldn't just not say anything. Say it. I believe Don already has. You want Brian buried as a Catholic? And next to his own father, yes. You surely know cause to deny me that. Brian might have been born a Catholic Ivy, but he didn't live as one, not with me. And I want him buried from this house as my husband. I see. I hope you do. Although from what I can gather, you chose not to regard him as such while he was alive. Oh, please. Well, you didn't. Otherwise, why else was he out like he was? If he'd have been at home where he should have been, none of this would have happened, would it? No. You drove him out of this house, and now you're trying to deny him a proper burial. I drove nobody out of any house. Well, then why he was went it? of his own free will, like he'd been doing for weeks. And why? That is what I'm asking. Because you chose to make it clear that this wasn't his home you anymore. You want to know why? You want to know? 
Then ask the girl he was out with. Ask her what he was doing out. Girl? What girl? No. Just forget it. Please. I know what you're doing. You're trying to make me think bad about him. That's what you're doing. You're defending yourself. She's the police main witness. Ask them if you don't believe me. I don't believe you. No. I don't know what you think I've done to you, Gail. Or what you think it is that Brian did that you've now set your face against both of us. Hey, will you just go, please? Will you just go? Right. I see. I will. You shouldn't have come here. We shouldn't be talking like this. Well, I shan't be coming back, so you've no need to worry about that. We still have to bury him, Ivy, however it's done. I think you should come back for that, don't you? <laughs> Bit of a showstopper, isn't it? Well, I must admit, it doesn't seem as bad now as it did. I must be getting used to it. Yeah, right, toothache. <laughs> <laughs> How are things? Uh, well, I'm just hoping that once we get the funeral out of the way, she'll uh, start to come to terms with it. Yeah, well, I'm sure she will. If only for the sake of Gail and the kids. Two o'clock, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. right well, um, we'll be thinking about you. Oh, that's good. There were enough mocking and car windows to grow spuds. At least we can see where we're going now. I know where we're going, and it's not St Luke's neither. Look, love. There's no point in you getting yourself in a state. Not now. I am in a state, Dan. How can I help it? In an hour's time, they're going to be burying my only son. They're going to be committing his body to the ground. And it's all without the blessing of our Lord. He will have the blessing. Not from the church that he was brought up in and not from the church he was married in. Mind you, things were different ten years ago, weren't they? At least he was number one in Gail's thoughts then. Do you know, she even took instructions so they could get married in the Catholic church. And what for? What price are vows and promises now? Well, there's been a lot of water under the bridge since then, love. And none of it changes the fact that my Brian is a Catholic. He was always a Catholic. And he deserves a proper Catholic funeral. Look, I, we've been over this a dozen times and it still didn't change anything. Look, love. I know that things might not be the way that you would have wanted them. And it's painful for you, I can see that. But for the next couple of hours, you're going to have to put all these thoughts out of your head. Oh, for Gail's sake, I suppose. No. No, not for Gail's sake. For Brian's. Can't you wear the one with the horses no, on? No, you can't, Vicky. You just hold still. Here you are. Let me do it. Oh, thanks, Pauline. I'm all fingers and thumbs. Oh, this could be a bit fine for time, isn't she? Quite enough on my mind without worrying about Ivy, Alf. Well, maybe they're going straight to the cemetery. Look, what Ivy does is her business. I know what she thinks about all this. I know what she thinks about me. Right now, I'm about to bury my husband. The last thing on my mind is Ivy Tilsley. Oh, I'll go. Oh, hello, Robert. We're ready when you are. Uh, right. Uh, there's a few floral trimmings inside. Is it Ivy? No, it's the undertaker. Oh. Uh, Gail, love. They're here. Thanks, Alf. We should be back uh, just after three. Oh, well, don't worry about a thing. I'll have everything ready. It uh, only needs putting out. Come on, pets. Oh, little mite doesn't know what's happening. Well, that's something to be thankful for. Yeah. Come on, Nicky. I'll be thinking of you.
Okay, it's all right. I'll see you after dinner then. All right, sit down. Sit down, love. All quiet. All right. A couple of phone calls. How about you? Not a lot of excitement in a ham salad. <laughs> well, it depends who you share it with, you see. Who said I was sharing it with anyone? Hmm. You've not seen Alan on your travels, then? No, I haven't. And how many times do I have to tell you there's nothing going on between me and Alan? Oh, yeah. Can't I be friendly with a fellow without there being something between us? Of course you can, yeah. It just depends who the fella is. Now, if he happens to be half Alan's age, fancy free, someone who could show you things Alan Bradley forgot years ago. Sounds interesting. Certainly does. Yeah. If you do happen to meet anybody like that, shove them in my direction. Hey, hey, there's no need to be like that. I'm only trying to do you a favour. Yeah, well, I'm not the only one, am I? Hmm. I just don't want to see you making a fool of yourself. It's easy done, you know. Well, that's all right, then, because that makes two of us. Honestly, these Victorian houses, they won't condemn him, most of them. You might be stuck at Eden Place till now. Have you know. I thought you said it was a straight up and down job. Yeah, well, that's what I thought till I saw the wiring. Is there anything urgent, Dawn? Nothing, I can't wait. There's right. a couple of inquiries there for estimates. Yeah, well. later, Martin. And don't leave your handbag on my desk. <laughs> Rita, it's me. Hey. Sorry I'm late, yeah. No, yeah, I know I did. I got to get held up on a job. Listen, have you eaten yet? Okay, well, listen, I'll see you in ten minutes in the Rovers, okay? Yeah. Okay, love, see you then. Bye now. Right, see you later. All right. So, so you just can't keep his hands off me, can he? Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus replied, I am the truth and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. I will not leave you bereft, I am coming back to you. In a little while the world will see me no longer, but you will see me. Because I live, you too will live. Peace is my parting gift to you, my own peace, such as the world cannot give. Set your troubled hearts at rest and banish your fears. To those who knew Brian, his family, his relatives, his friends, the suddenness and untimeliness of his passing is a huge burden to bear at this moment in time. But it is at this moment that we should remember him as the man he was during his all too short life. His qualities as a husband, a father, a son, a friend. Think of all the joy he brought into your lives. Think not what you have lost with his passing, but what you have gained as a result of knowing, loving and being loved by Brian. They're talking about my dad, aren't they? So where is he now then? Your Lord and Master. Dubai. Your heart bleeds for him, doesn't it? How the hell did he manage that? Influence, love. I reckon I must have been under it when I let him take off without me. <laughs> uh, scraping the bottom of the pan a bit, I'm afraid. But I managed it. I'm afraid we've left it a bit late today. Oh. Who's left it a bit late? All right, point taken. I'll take these to the table. Okay, I'll just wait for you. Give us a scotch, please, Beth. Right, Maggie. All right. Hello, stranger. Stranger? Yeah, I think you've been avoiding me. Oh, thank thanks, you. Uh, no, no, I've just been busy, haven't I? Yeah, I thought it must have been that. I couldn't think of any other reason. Listen, uh, about the other night. One scotch for the master of the workhouse. Tell them. Yes, you were saying? About the other night when you bumped into me and Oh, forget it. I had a discretion. That's me. Yeah. There was nothing going on, you know. I mean, we were just talking business, but uh, there are some people that wouldn't understand that. You know what I mean? I don't know why. I'm sure you must take Martin for cosy candlelit dinners for two when you've got business to discuss, eh? See. Cheers. Hey, Thanks. What did he want? Oh, Mike. Oh, it's just a bit of business, that's all. Well, that reminds me. I meant to ask you this morning, but it went clean out of my head. What did? That customer that you were uh, wined and dined last week. What about him? Oh, what happened? You never said. Oh, uh, no. That was one that got away, I'm afraid. Oh, so it was a wasted evening then? I wouldn't say that exactly, no. I mean, personal contact is never wasted, is it? Oh. Eat your dinner, it'll get cold. Yeah. I still can't believe he's gone, you know. And we'll never see Brian Sills instead of this bar anymore. No. No, it is a bit of a choker, isn't it? Anyway, Kevin seems to have taken it pretty hard, that's for sure. It was a shock, wasn't it? Well, it was a shock to us all. Well, but it's Gail I feel sorry for. I mean, what kind of future is she going to have now? I mean, left on her own with two young kiddies to bring up. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. If a man has faith in me, even though he dies, he shall come to life. And no one who is alive and has faith shall ever die.
Having entrusted our brother Brian into the hands of God, we now commit his mortal body to the ground, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. To our Lord Jesus Christ, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Of course, it's not too big for me, no. Well, I think you'll find our price is as competitive as anybody else's. Ha! <laughs> yeah, especially for an old friend like you. Listen, when do you want me to come around and give you an estimate? Uh, yeah, well, I think next week will be better for me and all. Just a second. Uh, what day next week? When? Tuesday? Yeah, that's fine. Sometime in the afternoon. Right. Okay, smash it. I'll see you then, then. I look forward to that. Yeah, and listen, I'm glad to hear you're doing so well. Yeah, ta-da, man. Bye. Thanks a lot. If they're not right, bring them back and we'll change them, OK? Well, that should be a nice little number. What's that? Just had a phone call from an old mate of mine. He set up in business on his own, and he wants me to give him a quote for a big warehouse over at Preston. Right? Preston? Yeah. Your fame is spreading. <laughs> so it seems, yeah. Do you fancy a brew? Yeah, I'd love one. Are you sure you're not coming back for a cup of tea? Quite sure, thanks. I appreciate the offer, but I've got a lot on this afternoon. Well, thanks again. Thank you for a very nice service, Minister. <laughs> Do you know, she's not said a word to our Gail. Ah, well, leave it, Bob. Well, I'm only saying... Audrey, drop it. Hey. Hey. I want to go home. Oh, well, we can't just ignore everybody. I want to go home, Don. Oh, look, come on, look. We'll go have a cup of tea with Gail and make your peace. Me make my peace with Gail? If it hadn't been for Gail, our Brian would still be here. Think of Brian. But he wanted this. I am thinking of Brian. My only son has just been late to rest without the proper blessing of the church. Now, are you taking me home or do I have to get a bus? Thanks to all. Listen, yeah, never worry. I just want to, uh, I just want to get something straight with you. Huh? Yeah. You know that, um, that night we went out to dinner last week when we bumped into Mike Baldwin? What about it? Well, I haven't asked you out since then, have I? And, uh, well, I just didn't want you to get the impression that just because you didn't jump into bed with me, you know, that I wasn't interested anymore. In fact, I respect you all the more for it. What? Well, yeah, I think, you know, we've got a nice relationship going on. I'm not going to spoil it all by rushing things. Mr. Bradley, the only relationship we have is a purely strictly business one. Well, I think I can help you change your mind about that. I don't know what Ivy reckons she's playing at. I mean, you know Nicky's been asking after her, don't you? I've told you what Ivy does is her business. Oh. Brian's gone now. Right now, I'm more concerned with those people who have stood by me. Yes, I know. Oh, Are you okay for drinks? Yes, thanks. I thought you got through today very well, love. <laughs> well, I did my best. It's just as well nobody could see what was going on inside my head. Yeah, I can imagine it. I went through it all when I lost my husband. Mind, he had a very good life. Yeah, well, that's the tragedy of it. We're having a bit all to look forward to. Well, thanks for coming anyway. I know it can't have been easy so soon after your dad. I don't know if you know how much it means, knowing you care. Of course we do. Look, we uh, know you had your problems, but... He was one of the best with Brad. She knows that. She wouldn't have married him again if you hadn't, would you, love? Well, I'll uh, see you later. Just uh, help yourself to something to eat if you want to. Thank you, love. Uh, I'll get that, love. Oh, thanks, so. <coughs> Oh, hello. Uh, sorry we're late, only Ivy needed a bit of time to... Uh, well, to get herself together, you know, it's been very difficult. Yeah, yeah, of course it has. Anyway, you're here now, so uh, come on in. 
You don't have to make excuses for me, you know. I still reckon I'm doing the wrong thing and I don't care who knows it. Come on. Hello. Thanks, sir. Do you know, I can't get poor Brian Tinsley out of my mind this afternoon. Oh, no. Yeah, well, it'll all be over now. I wonder how Gail's bearing up. Well, she seems to have come to terms with it better than Ivy. Mm. Ivy's taking it really hard. Yeah, well, she's not had the better luck with her family, has she? Losing Bert the way she did after her accident, now losing Brian. Yeah. It's not something you get over easily, losing somebody so unexpectedly. Oh, I'm sorry, Rita. I'm thinking. Well, that's all right. True what they say, time is a great healer. Don't stop you having your moments, though. I think you should try and get an early night, sorry. Yeah, I will. Do you know, I don't know what I'd have done without Paul. Oh, I know. It's at times like this you find out who your friends are. You say that again. <laughs> Would you like a cup of tea, Ivy? No, thank you. No. Uh, do you want another, Don? No, it's all right, no. Oh. Well, I think, uh, all things considered, everything went as well as could be expected. Do you? Yes, I thought it was a, a nice service. It was a farce. Hey, come on, my love, come on. All that thing those ministers said about my son. I mean, he never even knew the lad. Yes, but it was all true, wasn't it? It would have had more points if Father O'Donnell really said it. No. At least he knew our Brian. He was the one that should have commended his body to the Lord. Now, look here, Dear, I... Dear, don't. It's not worth it, love. Right. Now, if you're sure you can manage, I'll be off. Oh, yes, of course we can, love. We're never going to be able to thank you enough for everything you've done today. Thanks, yeah. Pauline. For everything. Oh, forget it. I'll call round tomorrow. OK. At least everything will be straightforward. Yeah. Straightforward? What about the estate and that? Is Brian making a will? Oh. You'd be surprised how many lads his age don't. <sighs> well, at least that's something to be thankful for. ta -ra, love. And it's hardly surprising, isn't it, when you knew what sort of a lad our Brian was and what he thought about his family. Uh, right, love, I think it's time we're off. He spent every waking hour thinking about his wife and his children. They were his life. And where has it got him? Where has he ended up? I think you've said enough, Ivy. Really? Well, at least my conscience is clear. Uh, I'm sorry about that, honest I am. She's very upset, you know. She's the only one, is she? No. All quiet on the western front, Betty. No rioting, plundering yeah. or pillaging. Well, not so far. Good, that's the way I like it. Thought you were getting us another pair of hands. It's all in hand, Betty, love. Which means we're going to have to muddle through best as we can till Alec gets back. Which means it's all in hand, Betty, love. I want to make sure I get us the right one, don't I? Preferably one where I don't have to play acting unpaid social worker, <laughs> marriage broker and general wet nurse. <laughs> yes, Cherubs, what's your pleasure? A and a half a lager, please. Yeah, it's a big warehouse. Be a good job if I can get it. And I will, you know. I mean, it's an old mate of mine. He's uh, got up in business on his own. So when are you going then? Um, well, I thought sometime next week. Uh, thought I might stay over. Impressed? Mm. It's only half an hour at motorway. Yeah, I know, but... Well, I'm not going till the afternoon. And then we'll probably go out for a meal after and a jar or two on a natter about old times. You know how it is. So you won't be taking Martin then? No, not just for an estimate, no. Well, good luck. Hope it turns out all right. Okay. It'll make up for the disappointment you had over that other big job. What other big job? That office block development. Oh, yes. Yes, it will. Yeah. Dinner party? Well, when I say dinner party, I was only thinking of about half a dozen of us. Uh, the DP and his wife, oh, of course. Derek, DP and his wife. Well, maybe I do think it's important to make an impression, not only at the office, but socially, if we are to progress in this world. You have to make certain people aware that there is more to you than meets the eye in the business environment. Like you were going to do with your Christmas cheese and wine. Exactly. When he didn't turn up. He was unavoidably detained, Mavis. Anyway, he was so disappointed at missing our little soiree that I thought we ought to do it again. Only this time, a little bit more intimate. More selective with our guests. Well, it wouldn't be a problem, would it? Well, it's no problem, Derek. Providing you don't spring on me at the last minute that is a vegetarian or something when I've spent all day cooking up a particularly piquant bird burgundy. Uh, no, no, there's no danger of that. And providing we don't have more than six at table. Because otherwise we'll have to have a second sitting. Sorry? <laughs> well, we've only got six chairs. Oh, I see what you mean, yes. Now, um, about the other couple. 
Well, I could have a word with Rita, see if she and Alan are free. Uh, no, no, I don't think so, no. Um, Rita's all right, but, um, Alan? No, you see, the kind of evening I had in mind, well, chemistry is of paramount importance. Chemistry? Yes, the right mix. People were going to get on, not only with DP and his wife, but are, are also stimulating company. A couple with a bit of standing in the community. Like who? What I was thinking of Ken and Deirdre Barlow, actually. Ken and Deirdre? Well, I can't think of anyone better. My MD and his wife, uh, his office manager, me, uh, the proprietor of a weekly newspaper, and his lady councillor wife, and... Uh, me? Oh, right. Has she gone off? Yeah, like a light. Hey, do you want me to go round and fetch Nicky? No. Give him another half hour. Oh, the day he's had, he deserves it. Oh, bless him. He was smashing the wound. Yeah, he was. I'm glad he wasn't round to see Ivy's outburst. Oh, well, she'll get over it. She will upset, I suppose. Well, we all are. She can please herself. I've got quite enough on my plate now thinking about my own life. Me and the kids. Well, if anybody had told me 12 months ago how it was all going to turn out, it's not a date I'm going to forget in a hurry. Mm. That's mm. for sure. It's not every day you bury your husband, is it? It's not every day you marry him for the second time. Marry? Oh, love, you mean... 12 months ago today. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I... It's just with everything else, it went clean out of me head. We got married. Came home. Had a meal to celebrate. Man and wife, again. Only this time, it was for good. Till death is too part. Oh, come on. <gasps> Shh. Now, come on. It's so <laughs> It's so Hi, V. Hey, coming up, love. Eh, hey, dear Ivy. You can't go on like this forever. Your Brian is dead and buried. You're not helping him. All you're doing is screwing yourself up. How do you expect me to rest easy in my bed, Don, knowing that my only son wasn't given a proper funeral? Oh, that is not true. It is in my eyes. And it is in the eyes of the church he was brought up in. All right, I know he strayed from the faith, but he could have been returned. He could have come back to the church. That was the last thing that that wife of his could have done for him, and she failed him. We don't know that. A simple funeral may have been just what Brian wanted. How would she know what our Brian wanted? Hey, look, love. Now you're tired, you're upset, and you're saying a lot of things that you just don't mean. That's just where you're wrong. I mean every word I've said about her, believe me. For what she's done to my brain, I'll never forgive her. Oh, now you don't mean that. Oh, yes, I do. When they lowered my son into that grave this afternoon, he wasn't the only one that was dead. As far as I'm concerned, so was his wife. from Weatherfield tomorrow at 12 midday and coming up next our lunchtime soaps continue here on Plus and Cathy's getting more trouble from that poacher's family in Emmerdale.